Hello. Welcome Hello. back. Hello. Hi. Movie. You didn't even let me do the intro. Welcome back to the Mover and Gonkey show. And you all know my assistant, Rod Hardstock. <laughs> very Mace. nice. Mace is here joining us. We're very happy to have yes. Mace. It's yes. awesome. She and of course, is. Douglas. Well, there's Douglas. Hello. Yes. I hope, I hope Douglas is there. Um, we we introduce one at a time, Gonkey. You got to let me finish. And then we got to talk about Mace. And then we can talk cool. about you. Typical fire pilot just wants to talk about himself. Hi, Mace. Hi. Welcome back. Hey. Good to have you. You uh, too. Last time was you, fun. Yeah, and this time is more fun. We're going to talk mental health here at the end. Uh, and you have got a badass masterclass that is coming yes. out like in a week, right? So yeah, we're going to talk yeah. about that too. But tell 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 us a little bit about it before we get to the the mental health later. Yeah, I'll try to save some for that segment, but. Uh, I had a lot of really great people reaching out, asking about keynotes and being like, how can I buy a ticket to attend a keynote? Turns out they're for corporate audiences and that's not really how it works. And I was like, wait, I got to figure out a way to bridge this gap between like the corporate business to business type clients and all of these amazing supporters that I have. And so I built a virtual course, six weeks long. It's very affordable. So anyone can join it. There's a community aspect to it. And badass rhymed with masterclass, which is like the buzzword to call your virtual uh, courses. Uh, yeah. And people always are like, you're a badass. And I would never call myself that, but I think it's something people aspire to be. So it's all about overcoming your inner voice, creating confidence, being bold, like rewriting your internal narrative um, to empower people. So it's exciting. It oh, starts yeah. in a couple of weeks. That's I awesome. need this. As long as I don't have to write any papers. I'm taking doing this. <laughs> Donkey was making fun of me for... ACSC and I'm like, dude, this is pretty bad. Mace, that's is literally there a test? why I left the Air Force. <laughs> so I didn't have to do ACS. <laughs> Honestly, that's the coolest part. I mean, you are a badass because you just said, you know what? Done. I'm out. Sure. I'm not doing this. I'm gonna go make my own future, fortune, Destiny. life, Destiny. help people, destiny. There you go, Gonky. And yeah. here you are. That's pretty yeah. awesome. I am the commander of a business of one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's that's motto as well. I've got a, I've got a couple of those maces. <laughs> Mace, sorry. How many maces yeah. do you have? Yeah, no, I've got yes. <clears throat> uh, yeah, well, uh, cool. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, I dealt with a lot of the inner critic stuff and the, the really? calming that voice. So I'm, I'm interested to see how you, you fix it because I still fight with that. Um, Dagaki, yes, how was your weekend? Uh, it was, it was good. I served my country this weekend and you have a good uh, lunch. <laughs> yes, we had, um, uh, lunch with the junior enlisted, which is always fun because, uh, what's the cooler, one of the cooler things about the reserves is a lot of times you'll have 
we do these luncheons with new enlisted and it turns out their um phds getting their second mat like like the smartest people you would ever meet and it's just fun to just kind of learn uh learn about them where they come from what they're doing and how they're kind of i won't say using but maybe fitting the reserves into their life plan which is cool that's awesome doug what's up man long time no talk yeah just kind of been keeping low profile i like it oh yeah oh yeah well you know what we got a show we got a couple comments oh, we already have uh people blake.is blake that is says stick with the cove please have a long show tonight always looking cove. forward to it huh sick with He's the cove sick 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 rona rona you, you can't oh. say those words oh sorry to hear that yeah sorry man oh yeah sorry Jarhead says, I was in the Marine Corps infantry, a badass dumbass. <laughs> when this that is over, too. I'm going to go tell my husband. He was a turret gunner in the Marines. So oh, perfect. Gonna, Thank you for that potter. You're a badass dumbass. <laughs> Master class and badass dumbassery. <laughs> Mace is the top hat on the mullet that is the mover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. gosh, that's so true. That's why it's funny. That's... Um, <laughs> Hey, uh, I don't know if we're really going to talk about this, but breaking news. This is kind of sad. Ooh, Spirit yeah. today announced that they're furloughing 260 pilots to save money. <laughs> this comes on the heels after their attempted merger with Front, or sorry, JetBlue didn't work, which was previously going to be Frontier. The board of directors turned that one off, and then the government turned off the JetBlue thing recently, and now they're furloughing. Not a good sign. No, and they paused, uh, what, they bought a bunch of new Airbuses, and they paused that. Yeah, they're closing the uh, Atlantic City base, too, I think. Mm, yeah, so no bueno. Just, yeah, I mean, Mace, you you know, you made that distinct choice of not going to the airlines and stuff, yes. so that's that's one of the benefits of choosing your own adventure. Yeah, I when I see the headlines about, like, profit sharing and 401k matching, I have that split second of FOMO. <laughs> Uh, no. but otherwise I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what it, is that? <laughs> it is a cool, it can be a cool part-time job if you can make it work. Uh, a lot of people do have side hustles and, and stuff like that. But if you can honestly, Gonky and I think are of the same mindset. If you can oh, yeah. make it work on your own, a thousand times better than any, yeah. any boss. Any yeah. Job, oh, yeah. Anything. Totally. yeah. The, uh, I've realized even my most stressful moments in my business to mm. not have that feeling that someone's going to call me or email me like a boss and yeah. be like, you're supposed to do this thing or you need to be here or whatever. Like I have complete control of that. It's so much less stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but going back to the original thing, it's very sad for, you know, those that are, are furloughed, although, you know, they might get greener pastures. United's hiring direct entry captains right now. They may be able to get something better and, get away from spirit um they've always been good to me when i've jump seated on them so can't say anything bad about spirit all right uh gonky yes sir speaking of airlines <clears throat> and oh, and this boy. was interesting so uh we've got the video but go ahead and play it i'll, I'll show you this picture here in a second because i tweeted <clears throat> this earlier and somebody actually responded Boeing in the 737 way. operated by southwest airlines during takeoff in Denver last night, uh, listen to the pilot and air traffic control working together to land the Houston bound plane safely back at Denver International Airport. 3695, no problem. Fly present heading. Do you need to run checklist? Yeah, we're going to need some time. It, it, for now, everything's OK. Um, and we don't even know the nature of it, but apparently uh, several passengers and flight attendants heard something loud hit the wing. So we're just going to take our time, get set up and be ready to go. Thank you. I was 3695, no problem. You can expect vectors. Just keep me advised of the situation um, and let me know if you want to declare an emergency, but I assume we'll probably do that anyways. Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, get back to you. Stand by. 
I mean, pretty extraordinary, right? The images you're seeing there while they're taxiing for takeoff, presumably, because we heard our Pete Montine earlier say that uh, the no. plane actually made it about 10,000 feet in the air it's before it was able to turn around <laughs> and then did <laughs> land uh, safely there. In a statement to CNN, Southwest Airlines apologizes for the inconvenience, oh. but said their highest priority is the safety of their customers. The FAA is investigating the incident, which is the latest in a string of issues to plague Boeing aircraft. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. And that's why yeah. I wanted to bring that up, because, look, I was watching the news this morning. Terrible idea, but local news. You'd think local news would be a little bit better because, you know, the weather and whatnot. But this is this was their banner. This was their headline. <laughs> Emergency landing. Southwest plane with Boeing engine forced oh, to dear. land. <laughs> this, is I, I, this is why you should yeah. not, never trust media, girls, exactly. boys and girls. Exactly. <laughs> like, if they're doing this for stuff I know about, what are they doing for the stuff that I don't know yeah. about? Um, yeah. The I mean, for one, <clears throat> they say Boeing 737, but it wasn't a max, right? Movers 800, which is... Oh, that's still older. seven. That's still a Boeing. It's, it's an older. It's not, you know, the Max is the one that's in the in the spotlight yeah. right now. So it's an older 7.3. And Boeing definitely doesn't build the engines. Shocker. Not as not to my knowledge. No. no they don't. GE. In I fact, don't think they even the cowlings and stuff are. I think that's all part of the engine assembly, right? That's yeah. They, yeah, they don't put any of that stuff on there. Most of them are GE. And I mean, it's the cowling, right? It's held on by a couple of latches. So uh I mean. A little bit of well some sensationalism uh, yeah. at its finest there so but it is i don't know i just watching that video it's pretty shocking on the landing rollout when she slows down the cowling disintegrates i was pretty surprised how how that thing just came apart like that well according to cnn that was the takeoff i'm pretty sure that was no the... you're right i'm saying according <laughs> to cnn they're like they were taxiing for takeoff and the thing just disintegrated and they kind of they went anyway why not yeah they the taxi for... yeah exactly it's uh, exactly but i don't know I, you know what though i mean uh <clears throat> having flown airliners it's you know for him to say we don't really know what's going on but the passengers in the flight attendants said something hit the wing it's just just goes to show you how like really in an airliner, your SA is like ahead of you. You can't, you know, looking back is pretty, is pretty tough in an airliner. Um, but obviously they probably ding. Hello. <laughs> yeah. The I was going to say, can you not see though that far down the wing? No, it's it. You Mace is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's like in a fighter, right? Boom. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I got like, oh, everything's there, you know, <laughs> but no, not, not, no. Not an airline. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. In the in the Airbus, you can if you really tried, you could probably see the cowling. Uh, you see the wingtips. Yeah, you see the you outer. See the tips. You can't see the engine. Like you're not mm. gonna. Unless, I mean, maybe if you press. Good. I've never tried to press my. Right. Yeah, I've never. I've never. <laughs> like I've never had a situation where I'm like. You know, yeah. I. I but in the window. <laughs> honestly, Mace, what's the first rule? Sound cool on the radio, right? They did that. Yeah, nailed, nailed it. it. Very, very nailed nice it. line. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I, mean, I don't know what's wrong, but the passengers told me that there's something wrong. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> but but I mean, from your from their perspective, nothing red is illuminated in their face. Yeah. Nothing no, totally. yellow is illuminated or orange is in their face. There's nothing. There's no bells. There's nothing. It's just ding. You know, hey, what's going on? Is it time for our pee break yet? No, we got the engine <laughs> just came apart back here. <laughs> not nah, it's, it's still good. It's still good right, right here. I, you know, yeah, we're, we're not even doing this. There's yeah. probably there's no warning or caution you would get. I don't think so. No, and I mean <laughs> it's gonna fly fine, right? Like it's it looks a lot worse than it actually is. Yeah, I, I guess the real risk is you know maybe hits the tail. You know right. something like. Uh, hits binds the control hits a you know but in this case uh i think the bigger story here is that boeing southwest and the 737 are under the microscope mm -hmm. and I, I i throw southwest in there because of the LaGuardia thing we just had right southwest is the largest operator i think probably i mean that's all they operate so they've got to be one of the largest of the 737 um they have all these you know new orders and stuff and then Obviously, Boeing 
if it's Boeing, it's in the media immediately, you know, Boeing engine, just like they said on, on Fox. And, and then the, the 737 max has the issues, but you know, this is probably a 15 year old airplane, probably 10, 15 years yep. old. You know, th this is not because somebody replied to me. They're like, well, when spirit aero systems did it, I'm like, no, no, they didn't touch this. This was I, either the engine, you know, whoever was working on it or, you know, maybe they just didn't do the best of, you know, post flight after or post maintenance whenever they open the cowling because it opens up. And then, you know, you always make sure I, when I did my walk arounds, I always made sure everything was flush. Yep. You know, that's that's the biggest thing because you don't want that to happen to you. Hey, sometimes <laughs> is it yeah. like as simple as they forgot to relatch it yeah, could be probably yeah, like probably how many like times it. have you taxied out and had a panel come open on a jet oh, yeah. and you're how many times have like... you had a and we we've come back with missing panels uh, yep. you know totally <laughs> how many times has a panel just departed <laughs> dropped object form where did it drop somewhere between misawa and the sea of japan uh, i mean <laughs> Look, the T thirty eight, the most recent one, the 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 Huffer panel, right? When that you do the battle damage check, and you're like, hey, don't tell me if that panel's open because it's always open. You know, it's mm. it flopping Dude, around. Skid lost the whole canopy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Skid. Yeah, things awesome. fall off airplanes. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, I, just, I wouldn't. Yeah. Just more Boeing I, in the news. I mean, just because the jet was built by Boeing, they're just gonna they're gonna beat that drum. As long as they can. Trending and clickable. That's what yeah. it is. Yep. Uh, it's extra cooling for the engine. Push it up. Yeah. Says <laughs> well, now I'm questioning uh, all my J's. Is it Jaeger or Jaeger? So for those that are questioning why I'm questioning this is oh because boy. it's not the LCA Tejas I oh. discovered <laughs> via the comment section. It's Tejas. So mm. Gonky was bullying the small country of I, India, and here dude, we are. No, India is not a small country. <laughs> I didn't, I've never said India is a small country. Uh, anyway, moving on um, to the so we're, we're always Maze. I think we were talking about F sixteen deliveries last time you were on the show, and and it's like the all Viper. the time. Yep. Yeah, it's it's like every week there's new things, which is cool because people were complaining uh, about enough. But so this is kind of a two part thing. One. It's okay. They're going to send, I think it was 32 aircraft to um, the Ukraine. So that's what they're, they're talking about. And we're, we've got an article later about Ukraine says, well, it's too late now. Um, but for now, they're talking about having a two uh, speed air force, which that might be lost in translation. But Agenda 2030 says that for all the rest of the planes, you have to get the F-16s to Viper level, which is uh mace you and i were talking about this we call it the viper right yeah. but everybody else says that the f-16v block 70 standard is the viper so anytime we make this comment people are like well it doesn't have it's not the viper but the viper don't worry um so they're gonna have uh strengthen the rafale fleet have 24 it'd be good uh and then they're gonna get f-35s which are under the block four, uh, under development block four configuration. Um, they were going to basically, God, right now they have an F4, a Mirage 2000 5, the F16 block 30, personal favorite, block 50, block 52, Viper, which is the, the block 70 standard, and then the Rafale. And uh, they're modernizing, you know, all these aircraft. And then, uh, six additional refouls and then the block fours but the biggest thing was they were going to take some of these jets they were talking about transfer them um, i think it was 32 um to look at that it's a good looking airplane uh the mirage there but they were talking about transferring i think it was 32 of them to ukraine which would obviously up the numbers as well and increase um the total footprint that ukraine has in the f-16 which these F-16s are even better than some of the older Danish jets and stuff. These are closer to actual block. They're actual block 50, block 52. Uh, Mace, you flew uh, the conformal fuel tanks, right? How does that? It. Yeah. Yeah. So how uh, is that compared to a regular Viper? The extra gas is obviously nice. It's somewhere in between like you would imagine. It doesn't feel like a clean Viper, 
but it doesn't feel like you have a bag hanging on the jet either. Uh, but it's for sure knows in the break turn. I, it was BFM because I was um, putting those guys through the flug, the flight lead upgrade. And anytime you did a break turn, it was very noticeable. Do, is it, would you fly conformal plus tanks, like a centerline bag? Or was it just, we have the conformals, like how much, what does that give you? Like 70 something, 8,000 pounds? Eight, I think it's thousand. eight. Okay. So it gives you like a thousand, eight, 800 pounds. It's not it's it's something it says in here somewhere i just saw it because i it's been a minute since i did it yeah. uh we just had the conformal tanks for bfm i pretty sure they loaded up wing tanks depending on what the mission set was okay I'm trying to find um this. correcting what i just said just to or clarifying because it wasn't in that article even though it said it was going to be in that article it's 32 up to 32 f-16s that they're going to give to the greek uh mm -hmm. to the greeks are going to give to the ukrainian air force uh and france is going to approve as well 24 mirage 2000 5s to ukraine is what they were talking about doing so um that would be the uh french approval for that side so that's a considerable increase in fighter capability um if they did that but so you did the one were they the quote unquote viper standard did it have like a isa radar and all that stuff or was it just the conformal fuel tanks that was different it was really the tanks they have the the drogue chute as well out the back okay. for landing which was weird <laughs> i'm gonna be honest yeah. uh otherwise everything else is was mostly the same from my memory did they talk about landing on like, because we've talked about that before about unimproved surfaces, roads and stuff like that. I mean, did, is that kind of part of their game plan as well? And does that shoot help? Is that or just for sm shorter runways? It's, I had asked about the shoot and there wasn't any discussion about that. I feel like FOD would be such an issue. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Hoover. <laughs> yeah. Like we fought it out engines at Hickam when we were TDY there with this pad. So yeah. like, I, I can't imagine landing on something unimproved with the vacuum cleaner attached to the front. Wow. Yeah. And I, I've talked about that before. I mean, you remember ice FOD, you know, ice FOD procedures, especially in Europe, you know, if it gets cold and now you've got moisture in the air, creates ice, breaks up, gets in the intake. Um, you know, when I was at Balad, I don't, you guys probably did this too, even though it was a U.S. field, it was still swept like every now and then. So we'd taxi around at night with the NVGs on so you could see the little glimmer of the rocks and avoid them so as not to suck up a rock in the intake. So it's it's definitely a consideration. Is the intake but heated on the F-16? The, is it is the is it heated? Inlet, not the not the intake, the inlet at the front at the cone is okay, heated. so like the Hornet. Yeah. Right? Okay. Am I getting Hornet and Viper confused, Mace? No, you turn for anti-icing. Yeah. yeah. Is it just like yeah, the cone? It's, it's just it's just the front. Okay. It's not the whole thing. It's just <clears throat> right. the front it's of the front edge. Yeah. So you could have ice build up on the inlet, and that's the dangerous part, right? It breaks and goes into the okay. Right. Uh Doug says it's three thousand pounds, which 3, sounds 000, like a okay. lot. So that oh, I mean they're big. Get, yeah. They run down the yeah. whole side. Yeah, that's who are they like are they kind of like the strike eagle? They can pop them on and off, or is it kind of a they did have some, sometimes they would be on, sometimes they would be off, but I gathered that it was quite the endeavor for maintenance to take them on and off. So it wasn't like you. something they did on a whim. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, it's cool. I mean, obviously the getting everything, I mean, so from the Greek perspective, that's really kind of a good thing, you know, having fewer aircraft types, being able to upgrade what you have going to the F 35, you know, I mean, it's really what you want especially you know if you're in a time of budgetary concerns it's always best to have you know a couple different types versus f4s geez <laughs> dude i love the phantom <laughs> come <Yeah>. on <laughs> the fuel mileage on that thing is not yeah. so good yeah. uh from the chat free diver thank you uh thank you. oh he forgot to type oh. video of the t-birds <laughs> at el centro why did two and four have a pod Oh, they were probably just in D models with a centerline tank on. Oh, okay. The two seater, you know, lose some space for gas, need that gas for the show. So at NL Centro, a lot of times they're flying um, some of the blues, 
in the demo so they can experience. So they probably have backseaters. Uh, Zippers Forever says, if you fly a, a conformal fuel tank Viper, does that make you an anaconda? And can you still call her <laughs> Fat Amy? Asking for Rinka, the puppy dog right there. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's still a better looking jet. You can you can put all the con you could stack conformals on that jet and still look better. I, I think the conformal on the F-16 looks looks really good. It I, does, yeah. It's a good look. I think it enhances uh, yeah. its looks. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Gonky, once again, uh, there's another 737 in the news, this time United. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, United. for the record, I love Boeing. I'm really happy. I don't, <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> no plans. Yeah. No doing no, anything. Yeah, no issues or anything. Um. Yeah, we talked about this one mover <clears throat> a couple weeks ago. Uh, Mace, like we were talking, there was like a string of five incidences with mm -hmm. with Boeing. This is one of them. They seven three Max landed at uh, in Houston, right, uh, and slid off the end of the runway. So, uh, so this is the preliminary report, <clears throat> and if you read through it, uh, basically they landed. Uh, and I, like I've been in this scenario before. So like where I fly out of, like the terminal is all the way at the end of the runway and it's, you know, almost three mile runway. So these guys are coming in, <clears throat> breaking actions like five, five and five, or maybe it's three, three and three. Anyways, the, the breaking action is not perfect. They're landing. They're like, man, we want to roll the end. So they ask the tower, hey, ask them uh, if we can roll the end. Towers are like, yep, you can roll to the end. Um, and basically, I mean, like I said, we do it all the time because we, we want to minimize our time uh on the runway mainly so we can go home and uh these guys landed and uh, if you read through the report down at the bottom it's a pretty pretty large runway and basically they the captain like at the end game I, i'm not seven three smart mover but uh he says he goes some uh, uh breaks one two to one is that how it works when you're selecting mm -hmm. auto brakes yeah i mean there is but you wouldn't do that you just if you hit the brakes it'll take it off like it right, it kicks it once kicks you, them off. Once you, right? well, yeah, once you tap the brakes, you go manual braking. It it gets rid of yeah. it. So Airbus is the same way, but he selects he changes the brake setting, <clears throat> thinking that hey, I'm going to text this thing all the way to the end. And then I think they do do that because it talks about at the end there. If you scroll towards the uh, end of the article, how you know they landed fine. They they touched down a thousand about a thousand feet down the runway, which is which is <laughs> which is good. And uh, basically, the captain he didn't. He didn't apply manual braking until the last. Wait, uh, scroll up. It says it right there, Doug. Um, what you just said. The captain yeah. changed the auto brake yeah. setting from two to one, commanding a reduced acceleration rate and following an inch IMC approach. Yep. So this was prior. He verbal, like you don't do it on the landing rollout. You were like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, brakes right. three, flaps 30. And he's like, no, 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 like brakes two, flaps 30. Okay. Brakes one, which I mean, so that's but auto normally, braking. But normally, don't you guys get the printout, right? You put in everything, <clears throat> and the computer prints out the performance, and it says, "Hey, you need brakes too." In this case, whatever you just no, two. not for brakes. I mean, you you make that judgment call. At least at my airline, as I remember okay. it four years ago, you make that judgment call, and you when you brief the approach, you know, you're like, okay, you know, we've got X number of runway, we're gonna be a flaps thirty. Okay, here's the numbers for flaps thirty. Flaps thirty breaks two. Two okay. is pretty standard, you know, um, uh, cause I think it was one, two, three max and usually two or three, you know, unless you really needed to stop, um, you wouldn't do that. I've never seen anybody go to one. Usually if you're going to go to one, you just hit the brakes and click it off. So one is the least. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he went to the one before off, like, okay. <clears throat> off and well, like R RTO off one, two, three. Max. Well, I mean, they, they had a relatively normal landing and then he didn't start applying manual braking until <clears throat> 6,000 feet from the end. And that's when he first noticed, Hey, this thing's not slowing down. And so <clears throat> they try to get it stopped. Uh, mover, he, they touched down. I think it said 158 knots. Is that normal? Generally? I think it depends I, on the weight. the weight. I mean, yeah, to no, me, that's I'm, a little I, fast. I, no, well, I mean, a. Uh, uh, it, again, it depends on the weight and the flap setting, you know, yeah. how much fuel were they carrying? They could have been ferrying fuel, which usually you wouldn't in a, a base like that, their actual base. But yeah, I don't, 
I don't know. Yeah. Well, they touch down. Like I said, the captain gets on the brakes at about 6,000 feet from the end of the runway. There, that's what it looks like. So this is your auto brakes uh, off. Oh, One, okay. two, three, <clears throat> max RTO. <clears throat> so obviously it's an off when you're flying. And then usually we were in two, two or you three. Like, I, I don't, I mean, max is a lot. I mean, it is a lot. Uh, you, and sorry, go ahead. Do you use, uh, like for us, max is only used for actually takeoff or the rejected takeoff. Is that I use it? RTO? RTO is uh, okay. Your, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> RTO is rejected takeoff. That's what you are in takeoff mode. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So, all right. He dials down the, the brakes, but he lands and they're like, you know, it's, you know, the official investigation hasn't been out, but like I said, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been in, in their shoes many times and they're just thinking about, Hey, we just want to get to the end. And by the time they realize they don't have what they feel is required breaking, they're starting to run out of runway. So they do the best they can. The captain tries to take the airplane uh, off the, uh, the taxiway um, at better than 30 knots. And it starts skidding and sliding. And that's when it says in the article, right? The rudder pedals start shaking and they end up going off. Uh, into the grass. So, um, <clears throat> the official, uh, you know, report hasn't been out yet, but both of these pilots were, were very experienced. It didn't talk at all about, uh, what the, you know, was this their first leg on their first day or was it, you know, the end of the day or, you know, any kind of factors that might have driven, uh, human factors, but I don't know. Move right. I mean, could you see yourself kind of, kind of going down this, this path? Well, well, I mean, and, you know, Mace, you, you can speak to this too. Um, just in general, anything you fly, right? If it if it goes from dry, if it appears to be dry, and then you get a wet spot, so to speak, or a puddle or stuff like that, like, you can have traction and then not yeah. in an, an instant stuff. And, you know, in the F-16, when we'd fly that, you know, you had, well, I don't know, Block 50, I guess, is different than the Block 30, but the Block 30, itty-bitty breaks. And I can't tell you how many people, you know, would pop tires, um, you know, because they would land hot, high, hot, heavy, you know, kind of stuff. Or, you know, you, you're just you're a long rollout landing fast or something like that. So, I mean, I think you see this a lot in just jet aircraft now in um, in this. So they're saying they're gonky. There's nothing mechanically wrong. No, no, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't mention it, but I mean they did, uh, at least with the Airbus, you can calculate the landing distance with idle reverse. They did use idle reverse. They didn't use max reverse. So, no. um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, pilot error. You know, you you misjudge. You thought you had something. You get into a you know, it, it's dry, 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 and then you get into that where it's pooling water. And next thing you know, you know, the anti-skid's working and the anti-skid's going to keep you from locking up the brakes. Yeah. But on the same token, it's not going to slow you down as as much as, you know, if, if it were a dry runway where the anti-skid weren't engaged. So it's one of the worst feelings, feeling like you're not slowing down fast enough and the end of the runway is approaching or yeah. the jet in front of you is approaching. Yeah. With the formation sucks. Uh, I This captain started flying the year i was born he has fifteen thousand oh. hours <laughs> yeah so he's not new right no so, I mean, that's good i was like dang yeah. gina <laughs> yeah. Yeah. how old are you <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean like you said we've i i mean i've been there in the you know the super hornet has fantastic breaks and I, there was one time i i wasn't sure i was going to be able to stop it like you said mace like it does not matter how much harder you stand on the pedals yeah. all it's going to give you all i can give you you know yeah it's a scary feeling yeah. The seven three, I mean, the Max has really good brakes. Um, the seven three NGs, I mean, the brakes aren't bad. But again, you know, we don't know, um, you know, how much fuel are they carrying? You know, did they have some extra gas because of weather issues? You know, so were they? Were they one fifty eight sounds like they were heavier than you know your normal normal stuff, which means, you know, I mean, it's physics. It becomes a physics problem. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I, I always say, you know, uh, there by the grace of God, go I people <laughs> look, I mean, dude, you, you, people make mistakes, things happen. An arrow chain was not broken in this case. Uh, luckily no harm, no foul, really. I mean, damaged airplane, damaged egos, but everybody got off that airplane 
and live to tell about it. And it's a lesson learned. The problem, though, is that you're the wedge in a situation where the wedge is Boeing. So you're really oh, not yeah. the wedge, you know, and there's nothing to wedge you out of this because United and Boeing, just like we were talking about Southwest, I mean, United has gotten to the point where they're not even allowed to do some of their own check rides and stuff. They can't, they, you know, the FAA's come down on them and kind of made some uh, oversight concerns. So, you know, it's when you're under the microscope, halo or horns, you know, it's yep. that's why we're talking about this because uh, they're not the first and they're not going to be the last. No, <clears throat> I mean, unfortunately, and like you said, we were just thankfully, you know, no, nobody was, nobody was hurt. Yeah. Was the, who was flying? I, I missed captain, that part. I mean, the captain, captain. So there was no change of air, air tra aircraft control at this point. <clears throat> it didn't say, uh, uh no. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Anything to add on that one? I, I it just sucks. No, it's a bad feeling. <laughs> Cause yeah. you can't go, right? It's like, well, I can't go and I can't stop. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plexi. Plexi. Plexi says the Viper is the second best <laughs> looking fourth gen jet. Sorry, Gonky. There is no uglier fourth gen jet than a what? Viper with CFTs. Again, sorry, Gonky. Why is he selling Gonky? Sorry. Gonky has no stake in this. <laughs> Plexi, he likes picking on me, man. <clears throat> I think this he's is a cyber this bully. Is yeah, this is how Gonky became. A, this is his villain origin. That's right, man. I've been made fun of him. I've been now. damaged. <laughs> uh, even Sean's rolling in now. Ditto Plexi. Ah. But like my kid said at the Dallas Air Show, Gonky can't handle the Viper. <laughs> we love you, Rod Hardstock. Oh my gosh, Mace, you haven't seen that yet, have you? No. Oh my Gonky gosh. Man, oh, we got to get we that. We have to dig a, that up from the archives. That's a great. Uh, yeah, that's a great little video. These kids tell me I can't handle the Viper. <laughs> well. <laughs> So anyway, we were just talking about the F-16 going to Ukraine. And then like everything else, some general was quoted, some official was quoted. And now <laughs> they're like, yeah, you know what? It's too late. We don't want it. Bye, Felicia. Um, so the, of course, the media is now running with it or defense media. So the article was, and there's a couple of them like this. I just picked one. F-16 fighter jets no longer relevant in Kiev. Ukrainian official says this. A senior official, unnamed, says the F-16 fighter jets set to arrive later this year are no longer re relevant against Russian forces, once tagged as a potential war winner in Ukraine, which we also said was dumb. Sparked a prolonged debate as countries carefully weighed in on whether or not it should fly in the Ukrainian skies. Washington only gave the green light in August 2023 on the condition that the pilots undergo rigorous training in allied countries to safely and effectively operate the jets. However, high-ranking official told Politico, bastion of truth, that every weapon has its own right time in the ongoing war and the F-16s are no longer significant in Ukraine this year. Often, we just don't get the weapon systems at the time we need them. They come when they're no longer relevant. F-16s were needed in 2023. They won't be right for 2024. Ukrainian official who spoke under the condition of anonymity emphasized the importance of delivering weapons when they are needed the most. He said anti-tank missiles supplied on time by the UK and the US in the early weeks of the war proved decisive. Uh, more delays, less significant weapon system will be on the battlefield, he said. For now, another source, they need traditional weapons and drones in greater volume to match Rus Russia's offensive. We need howitzers and shells, hundreds of thousands of shells and rockets, he stressed. Estimating the war-ravaged nation needs at least 4 million shells and 2 million drones to win the war. Without the right weapons in sufficient quantity, they admitted there would be great risk of frontline collapse wherever Russian forces focus their attacks. Moscow has for weeks been smashing Ukrainian positions using guided aerial bombs, increasing likelihood of penetrating, so to speak, the front line. Elon Musk remarked the critical situation. Uh, and there's your boy, uh, Vla Vladimir Zelensky, Vladimir, the Russian prime minister in the Viper. Uh, they don't. Neither of them really looks like they know what they're doing. Uh, in the jet it's an awkward <laughs> photo op considering it's the like awkward. tragedy that's going on in the country yeah that's like, such a that cool? unserious yeah that's such an unserious like can you imagine winston <laughs> churchill you know in a p51 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah so i mean we're obviously not going to get in the to tactics discussion but 
to start off this discussion, I think it's, I think it's yes and no, like, right. Some truth to everything in, I agree with what he's saying. The battlefield changes. Some things are useful now. They're not useful later. And we have said from the beginning, when we first started talking about this, what, a year ago, two years ago, that it's not going to change the war. Like it's not Airwolf, you know, it's not going to come out there. <laughs> and next thing you know, uh, rah, rah, we win, you lose, whatever. Um, however, comma, they need jets. It's a good jet. It's a very capable aircraft. Their pilots are training very well with allied partners and they're good pilots and it will help. doesn't matter when you do it, as long as there's still a place to land and uh, a country to secure, it's going to help. I mean, th that will be useful. But what he's saying, I think, and that's what gets lost in the translation is, you know, stop promising, start delivering. You know, we, we can't wait. If we say, hey, we need this now, we need this now because the, the battlescape demands it. And I think they're at very big risk of having lines overrun the longer this goes on because they can't win that war of attrition, even though it's home field advantage. You know, you're still talking the overwhelming force of a, a country like Russia. Um, but we don't know. I mean, Mace, what do you think? I mean, what's your take on the Viper being the game changer? Yeah, it's not like a yes or no. It's like a, a gray area, right? Like it's going to help. Yeah. But like you said, it's not the easy button. And it, it does seem like it's just positioning as like a plea for help. Like that's the reason it's he's saying that is because like we need these other things as well. And so I'm using yeah. this example to make a point that you need to hurry up this supply chain and get us this stuff like ASAP. Yeah. yeah did he say 2 million drones? Yeah, yeah. I was curious how big are these. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. Well, it's the, it's the FPV drones. <laughs> it's it's the, because what they're doing, uh, not just the FPV, but I mean, the, the suicide drones, little drones that you see that go drop grenades in the tanks and stuff like that, that has changed our understanding of aerial warfare to some degree because you know, now a little 18 year old with a backpack launches a drone and next thing you know, he's taken out a, a T-72. You know, I mean, that's that's pretty damn it's different. You know, it's different from what we're what we're used to. So I agree with that. And Mace, that's a great point. They you know, this this guy, I'm sure he's sitting there if he even reads this article and he's like, ah, the damn media. OK, <laughs> I, I didn't. I mean, send him back. And we still Why want them. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like because it's so politicized, everything yeah. is, you know, everything is, uh, well, you know, Ukrainian official says that uh, it's too late, send them back. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, hurry up. You know, I mean, you, you started bleeding, you needed uh, bandages, you needed a tourniquet. Okay, we, we lost the arm, you know, but we still need to stop the bleeding. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, totally. we still need medical attention. Don't just leave us out here. Uh, just please hurry up. You know, that's all we're saying. Maybe a little bit faster and funnier. That's all. I'm also curious who it is as far as their position, right? Like they could <laughs> quote anyone. <laughs> <laughs> who it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some random kid in the, in the foxhole. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I agree that I, I agree with both sides of this because I, I do think that the F-16 is capable, but the battlescape has changed. You know, the the Patriots being out there and the Russian, uh, you know, the S-400, uh, the double-digit SAMs, you know, that does change. And unless you're using these jets for seed, you know, what, I mean, you're going to have issues. What we haven't heard, Donkey, have you heard, like, we, the news is always talking about, you know, we talked about Su-34s last week and whether that's true and the A-50 and stuff, but you're not really hearing a lot of Ukrainian fighters getting shot down anymore. <clears throat> no, no, you're right. I haven't. I just today I thought I saw again where like they claim to have destroyed a couple more Russian jets with drones, but I haven't seen any. Like you said, I haven't seen any on the Ukrainian side. Yeah. Uh, so that either means they don't they really don't have enough or they're doing well with what they have. But either way. Yeah, <clears throat> I man, I, I'm <laughs> I'm the tin hat guy, right? I'm always like, is the media not telling me everything? <laughs> like, yeah. Have they lost a couple? That's what I want to know. And, and even so the F-16, even beyond this war, you know, you're positioning 
potential allies in the region. I mean, that's what we do, right? When, when let's assume this eventually comes to a peaceful end, we hope we're positioning now ourselves with Western equipment in Ukraine, and they eventually become stronger allied partners to strengthen the defense of that region, just like we've done with so many other countries where we're like, hey, you want some vipers? Yeah, we're friends now. You know, or like in the case of Venezuela, we we become friends and then we're not friends anymore. And they shoot down <laughs> people with a model Vipers. OK, well, we tried or the Tomcat. Yeah, I ran. Dude, we were friends with Iraq for a while. It's <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, I mean, the you know, the politics aside, we've talked about it before, man. The you know, and I, I think probably there was stuff lost in translation, you know, the idea of like, Hey, if you would have given them F 16s day one, maybe by today now they would have logistically, you know, like training wise, maybe they'd be able to actually be using them now. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, the, there's the a lot reality, of reality. <clears throat> well, the reality is day one, you needed to give them, um, one of the squadrons from Shaw, right? Right. Like flown by the dudes. <clears throat> the dudes yeah. From Shaw. Yeah. Like, you needed yeah. to say, here's your combat coded wild weasel squadron, and they go to work. It's, it's tough doing the pickup game. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, and, yeah. And, and we've talked about this before. Putin said that countries that supply F-16s to Ukraine are now <clears throat> fair game. Yeah. Or host them. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, yeah. That, we just talked about the Greeks, you know, but. Some of those countries, though, it's like, you know, F around and find out. I don't think he wants that smoke, you know, <laughs> I mean, like Poland, you know, Mace, you've dealt, you flew with them. I mean, they're like, come and take it. They're pretty full up. They're a scrappy bunch uh, history. <laughs> shows. <laughs> but also that, what does that mean for us? Right. Like they come into Poland, so to speak, then that escalates everything. Somebody, uh, when we were talking about this last time, called Poland the Texas of Europe. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's about right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. You it's did, like the you Alamo. Didn't... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because we were talking about them. Uh, so Russia has shot, you know, missiles and drones across Poland to get to, you know, some of their targets. And mm -hmm. Poland has started, like, having airborne alert or scrambling jets to go intercept them you know because they're like well we don't know if they're coming at us you know because they've right. accidentally landed in our our country we got to protect ourselves and so people say well this is an escalation well it's not it's def defending their sovereign territory but they've got much better toys than anybody else so you know good luck putin if you want to try that do you think that the F-16s inbound to Ukraine is still going to have any measurable boost in morale for their forces? Probably. I, th I think anything does. You know, I think every time they get, you know, whether it was the shipment, you know, we're talking about Ukraine uh, or UK and US anti-tank missiles. I think anytime you see a care package, you know, and you're like, hey, this country's helping us out. It's, I mean, I, it can't, I don't, to me, I, it can't not be, you know, it, it has to be something worthwhile for them. But I, you still have to have tactics, support, logistics, places to land, all that stuff. It's not just a here you go. Good luck. So, I mean, he's right. But also, it depends. Uh, Gonky. Yes, sir. Back <clears throat> to the fatties. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a pretty, <clears throat> it's not really an article, it's more of a video, but um, <clears throat> they captured this A340 on takeoff, uh, presumably hitting some wind shear, mm. and it actually lands again before it takes off. So I don't know, Doug, will it play? Maybe. Oh, oh, oh. Make it large. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I was thinking that. And I was like, it would have been like, way cooler if you had. Just so uh, you know. I've had to cooler. filter myself and I forget where I'm at. Yeah. Oh, no. 
You put the wrong runway in the box. So you speak. think so? I, I don't know. From <clears throat> from me watching it here is a little bit herky jerky. Was it was it smooth or mode? Was it in PowerPoint yeah, it, mode? We're, we're in PowerPoint mode right now. <laughs> Doug's Doug's internet's worse than Gonky's dial up. How about um, now? Uh, no. it's a faster PowerPoint. There, they're airborne. <laughs> it's like okay, they're clicking they real wind, fast. Here they oh. hit the windshield wind shear. Oh, oh, there oh. she is. Touches back yeah. down again. Count it. One landing. It's like Mover's first landing in the P-51 in DCS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty wild. Uh, um, do they, they say, leave the gear down? Well, dude, they just took off. No, I mean, do they? I mean, oh. I would think. Like, no, I'm wondering, up. depending on yeah, how is. how much of an impact, you might leave the gear down because you're worried about. It was pretty smooth. I know the PowerPoint presentation here did not <laughs> show it show it accurately. Well, but it was fine. It was yeah. It was actually a uh, like the left main like just squeaked on, and then it became airborne again. But um, I don't know. You know, hey, we trained for uh, wind shear. I know. I I just I I just did my six month. We do every six months, and uh, we train for this as uh, as airline pilots and. I don't imagine the A340 is similar to the A320, but like there's most of your modern airliners and correct me if I'm wrong <clears throat> mover, but probably the 73 has some sort of uh, like winter radar warning, right? Oh yeah. 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 I'll tell you. Cool. Yeah. So you can turn on and, you know, if they tell you if there's uh you know, if it's red ahead, that's bad. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, there's onboard systems, there's, you know, other, uh, uh, you can use other aircraft too, right? Pilot reports, but you know, it's it, to me, it's a little bit odd because it looked like a pretty nice day. <laughs> now, I, wind shear happens on nice days, but um, I don't know. What do you think, Mover? I mean, it's mountainous area, right? Winds yeah, can shift, yeah. and suddenly you you got a uh, thing. I just wonder if it's so. It it kind of reminds me of not really a problem in the Vipers per se, but A10 folks oh. have had this a lot. Where, uh, in fact, I knew a guy who was call sign. I was like, skip. Because, you know, you take off and then you're heavy, hot, high, and they take off, they get airborne, and then it settles, and then they get back airborne again, usually with the gear already up, but the, the ones I've heard. But I mean, I can see it any, either way where, you know, you take off, you rotate, you get a little bit of lift, and then something, you know, you're, you're just not quite flying. Yep. And you touch back down, get that speed back. Although that does scrub a little bit of speed and then take off. But um, I don't know. Mace, what do you think? I mean, I think it's happened in the Viper even. Like you put the gear up too early and you touch, you settle a little bit as that happens. But I mean, I saw some stuff about they possibly had a tailwind oh, yeah. on takeoff. Take so they off. lost a little bit of lift. What's your criteria in the airlines for putting your gear up? Like, is there a delay more the, than there is uh, oh, right. in our Background. yeah it's so just the oh, positive yeah. for, right there's not sure, a, yeah. a longer delay than that well it's yeah it's a it's a well it is a longer delay because a positive rate is much different than a configured <laughs> sure. fighter like mm -hmm. you know in the viper it was like okay i got one foot positive rate you know gear yeah. up this is more like positive rate gear up yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other, the it's other a dance it's it. a it's a like, dance there's two people now <laughs> so it's not like you're in your noggin going positive rate gear up you know it's positive rate jim gear up <laughs> yeah you know, good thing I think I, did that. I think I just did that backwards but you get my point <laughs> yeah oh uh, in airbus it's uh positive climb so uh none of this rate nonsense uh, well that's it so. that's actually probably your airline that's your FOM. I don't know, dude. It's probably. <laughs> I mean, they were up. They were. They, they were, were climbing. Yeah. They were climbing. Yeah. But but Mason, the uh, windshield procedure, what? you know, you don't change configuration, so you hold what you got until I, you fly. I don't. Out. I don't buy windshield. I buy tailwheel tail tailwind. I think tailwind sounds a lot more realistic. Yeah. With an, a little bit of an early. <laughs> they rotated early. They lost a little yeah. lift. I've only mm -hmm. done it in the sim in the Airbus and you're supposed to stay in the flight director <clears throat> and the, the, the A340 looked like it pitched over uh, a little, which was a little unusual to me. And when we, I've done this in the sim, 
<clears throat> I don't remember that happening, but you know, I'm in my own little, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep, keep the cross on my, uh, on my display. But that struck me as a little odd when I saw that. I can't think of any procedure that would call for that. Um, now I have done something like that to avoid birds <clears throat> on, on takeoff. Like we took off and there was a whole flock of birds and I just, just eased the stick for just to keep us from flying through them. Um, so I don't know, but not, not wind shear, but I don't know. I'm not saying, you know, maybe they didn't wind shear. I don't know. Yeah. I was looking at, I guess the A340 is just like, yeah. So it's side stick, just like you guys. It's not because that was the A300 that has the. Yeah. Uh, 300 the... and 310, the older ones. Yeah. We've got, there's a meal tray there. You got to eat. <clears throat> I mean, look, conspiracies abound. Could be anything. It really could. Yeah. yeah. Well, they kept going, allegedly. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. Did they make All it to good. their destination? Did you die? <laughs> <laughs> Did you die? Yeah. Yeah. No. Sorry. Thankfully, everybody's okay. It was a little abnormal, but. Maybe the FO needed to log a landing before we <laughs> went out of currency. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Solid technique. Uh, I usually bounce my landings, not to take off. Although that yeah. the bar has been raised. <laughs> you think that triggered the FOCA? Like you think they got a call? Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, it'll tattle know. on you. Yeah, of course it will. Dude, they did paperwork mm. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Because I think, dude, all the weight on wheel stuff is on the left. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's like, oh, we're landing uh, again. Anyway, all right, moving on from the kids at home. Adam says, so lucky and blessed to have seen Mace with the birds. See, come here. We Thanks, say nice Adam. things about you, Mace. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I was looking at his picture. Sorry, I was distracted by the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's happening? Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Uh, before I move to the next one, Gonky, didn't you want to talk about an anniversary today? Oh, yeah, man. Um. Yeah, well, I so I started a little Facebook uh, account. I put it on there. So this pa uh, this past uh, Saturday was the thirteen years now. Twenty eleven, yeah, thirteen year anniversary for uh, we had a uh, crash at uh, in Lemoore, a Super Hornet. Two guys in my squadron mm -hmm. uh, were killed, and they were doing the uh, they um, they were doing the demo. They were actually on their basically their check ride uh, for the for them to go on the road to do the demo. And if you ever watch the, uh, uh, the Boeing super Hornet demo, they do a loaded roll. It looks pretty cool. <clears throat> kind of looks like the Hornet has thrust factoring, but it doesn't. And, uh, basically they entered the loaded roll about 50 knots fast. And instead of getting the, you know, instead of kind of mushing and rolling, the airplane was 50 knots fast and it, you know, it actually flew. And long story short, they, <clears throat> uh, it was 11 and beefcake. They, they uh they crashed uh beefcake was the wizzo he pulled the handle at uh he pulled the handle at 330 feet and they calculated that if he would have pulled it at 350 he would have lived if he would have pulled it at 410 they both would have lived so beefcake was out of the jet on his way uh up the rail um when the airplane impacted the ground and uh it, because of the descent rate the seat couldn't uh, wasn't able to save him. And then 11 was in the airplane when he hit. So, uh, we lost those two guys. It was, um, uh, you know, they were rag, I, rag instructors, uh, with me. And, um, you know, we'd had in the air wing, some accidents and stuff and in the community, but that was probably the first one that was in my, uh, squadron. And it was, uh, I guess, especially unique for me because I was a Keiko and I don't know, Mace, do you guys, I mean, even mover uh, it's a casualty casualty calls assistance officer. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, taking chance with, uh, who's the footloose guy, um, Kevin Bacon, me out. Kevin Bacon, <clears throat> Kevin Bacon plays a Marine in there and he's the Keiko. All right. So, you know, I actually did the notification, um, I, you know, took care of his belongings, help with the funeral. It was, a. it took me out of the flying thing for a couple months and it was a very eye opening experience. And, um, two great dudes gone too soon. You know, I'd spent a lot of time with, uh, I handled 11 stuff with his family and the great people. And then even, uh, beefcake as well. But, uh, those guys are gone. Never forgotten. There's actually, if you're ever out at, uh, NAS Lamore, if you look out to the West, 
about a quarter of the way down runway three, two, I think it is the, uh, the farmer that owned the field out there <clears throat> where they hit was a, uh, Vietnam vet. And he built a little memorial form out there with the American flag. And then on the base, a couple of the guys, uh, after I left the Navy and the squadron, they started a, um, like a memorial for all the lost, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say Hornet guys, but, uh, but, uh, the guys who, who, and gals, you know, who have, who have, uh, uh, perished out there. And it's, 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 it's pretty crazy. There's, you know, there's a brick at, uh, there's, uh, bricks out there with the names and call signs. And, uh, it's just, it's just kind of nice, but I mean, it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, April 6th, it's, it's my dog's birthday, which is great. But then it's also like, you know, the day that, uh, <laughs> being a fighter pilot wasn't the, wasn't the job I wanted to have, you know? So, um, but yeah, I just, thanks mover. I just like to remember those guys, good dudes gone too soon. And I, you know, I, I, I wish they were here. Yeah. Mace, were you on the team when Cajun's mishap was? I was going to say Cajun's mishap was April 4th. So that just happened oh, as wow. well. Yeah. Uh, I was applying to the team. We were supposed to do our Appy interview that week and it got canceled because of that. But I flew with Cajun in Misawa. So oh, I so already knew well. him pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was crazy well. to show up even a year later because the Thunderbirds is just such a small unit as far as like pilots, right? Mm -hmm. There's only eight of you. And then it's the public aspect of it. And just it was it was wild to show up to the squadron afterwards. Like it still has a huge impact on the team his was also demo practice right that was a uh, g-lock yeah the push pull yep yeah exactly yeah, yeah and i mean we we mentioned auto gcast we might talk about it later when we talk about block 70s but we had to have all of that taken out of the thunderbird mm -hmm. vipers because it the margin of error wasn't enough for us to fly our maneuvers. It would do an auto fly up, which would be out of obviously catastrophic, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. When you have four or six jets in formation. Um, so it was not in there. Uh, and it would have saved him in that situation, but it's such a, you know, you just, yeah. you never know what's going to be the next mishap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nickel <clears throat> on the grass for all of them. I mean, yeah. Cause I thought they were, close in dates when gonky told me about this one i was like i think cajuns is pretty yeah, right. was that 2011 that was 2018 18 yeah yeah okay uh well thanks gonky i'm glad i reminded you uh actually this comment reminded me big cheese says shout out to all the test pilots out there uh so we started naming names and i was like oh yeah uh, Sting, Jammer, Proton, Blender, Fish, Starfish, Torch, and all others. Gonky Mace, Mover, thank you, too. Thanks, Big Cheese. Look at that. What is Big this? Big Cheese. No. Sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mover. That's it. I just want to know what that was. Big Cheese, I wonder, are you talking about uh, Fish Heart Cop by chance? I think he's in Europe doing the test pilot thing. I'm just curious. That's all. <laughs> we were in the air wing together, and our, our last names are similar, and we used to get each other's laundry. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> uh, D Stu says, Was Mace in combat? You're truly an awesome human being, Mace. My daughter thinks you're amazing. We talked about that in your interview or the interview we did on the channel, not your like you weren't interviewing, yeah, Afghanistan. You know, we, we talked about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there with the Makos, I was yeah. there with the Spads, which was the TFI squadron I was with, but the Makos, our sister squadron, were also there, yeah, yep. Uh, go watch that interview, really good, good stuff. It was uh, one of my better interviews because <laughs> the I interviewee was so awesome yeah now never watch your own stuff it's all about the death mover <laughs> yeah, don't ever, ever watch uh zippers forever back on the ukraine topic says uh ukraine has spoken a lot about managing expectations for the s16 isn't the one thing that will win the war they desperately need artillery ammo there exists to allow artillery to move in range um davy says hey mason gang saw the t-bars last weekend those sneak passes are insane we registered 119 decibels near center stage so they're all getting va disability yeah i was gonna say not service related yeah <laughs> uh ethan et thompson videos only play using the gov computer terminal okay 
That's that's uh, Doug's PowerPoint. Uh, Angie says complete power failure on my Latam Skybus flight the other night was uh -oh. at one Charlie and could hear failed restarts or something. It hard broke. At least it was before takeoff and I got a night at the Hilton. Oh, wow. <clears throat> that could have been the FO disconnecting ground power with <laughs> without <laughs> without the APU on. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Does that hard break the jet? No, but it shuts everything off. I think I've mentioned it before, man. Like literally, I was like, oh, it, it, you know, they give you the signal, hey, do you want us to disconnect? I'm like, oh yeah, dink, and I hit it, and literally the jet went silent and dark and on cue, like this little four-year-old girl went, uh oh. It's <laughs> <laughs> like oh. the captain was dying. He's like, I've never done that. Uh. <laughs> so we two minutes later, or whatever, whenever our APU started up, we had lights again. So. <laughs> I'm probably not on your airline, but on my airline, which shall remain nameless, you won't get a four-year-old girl saying, uh-oh. You'll get about an 80-year-old woman saying, uh-oh, <laughs> because the video, it'll reset the monitors, and they have to then manually do the demo. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because oh, no. <laughs> it takes that long for it to like reboot and reset and all that stuff, and they eventually just have to do it themselves. For legal reasons, that's a joke, by the way. <laughs> Please don't come after me. Oh, dude. Uh, Angie again says, hope United and I have used up all our bad luck flying United Airlines from New Orleans to Houston. This is a short flight. Yeah, it's a short flight. Wow. Yeah. Jeff, uh, what is take fight vertical? And when is that good? Uh, well, this would be horizontal. And this would be in the vertical, right? Did we just say? Did we just say that? I, I don't I know. I need context. <laughs> did we ever? No, we haven't said that, but I think he's just generally asking. And we probably said it on previous episodes where I've talked about Canadian hornets like to go in the vertical for some reason. Yeah. <clears throat> and we do the and you know blow up to go up, um, or go up to blow up. But I mean, it's good when you're winning. Yeah. So you don't want to pull a lot of G's. <clears throat> Yeah, that's true. I mean, every going up is well, sometimes up, good. Yeah, yeah, up, not um, down. Down, you're gonna, it's gonna hurt. Yeah. Um, most, I don't know, in, in my limited experience, right? And like the T45, it didn't have a lot of thrust. So most of the fighting was, was horizontal to downhill. The downhill part would be vertical. But when you get in higher performance airplanes, F 16, 18, all your fourth gen fighters, you can fight upward or downward. So, that's typically what what is meant taking the fight vertical they li literally take it uh in the climb or in the descent yeah okay. thus ending our scripture lesson uh <laughs> be a Kate, lesson for the day <laughs> review says, gonky thank you for your tribute to your comrades <clears throat> uh there's one mm. i'm gonna let mace answer this one <laughs> thoughts about the upcoming yeah. blue angles IMAX movie. Angles. Angles gets everyone. Don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, it looks epic. Not going to lie. The filming looks really cool. Uh, Kevin LaRosa shot that. He was like one of the helicopter pilots for it. He worked on Top Gun mm -hmm. as well. Really mm -hmm. talented uh, aerial cinematographer. Uh, yeah, it looks cool. It's a bummer that it's coming out before the Thunderbirds have one. But other than that, are I would they, go watch it. Are they it. getting one? Is that I in the can, works? Cannot confirm or deny, but stand by. <laughs> <clears throat> so it helped but, NASCAR. Go ahead. Go ahead. It'll be cool. I'm I like I thought there was already a Blue Angels IMAX. Is it a ride along? Is this different, Mace? What's the I think one that one's a little old at this point, and just like the the technology for filming, the camera work has gotten so much better that it just looks like they're redoing it. You're like right there. Yeah. We've now got I got some go five points. Well, we've got some five point seven k T thirty eight footage, Gonky. Pretty much IMAX. <laughs> it's almost the same, right? <laughs> almost the same thing, dude. I probably won't watch it. I mean, I probably will eventually, but I'm not I'll excited go. about it because it's just gonna make me sad. I gotta take my kid. He'll want to see it. Yeah, it's a good IMAX movies are just cool in general. Well, no, I mean. Do you still have to wear the glass? I'm a little old, dude. Do they still have to wear the... the... That's 3D. That's 3D. I'm getting my stuff mixed up. That right. makes me nauseous. Okay. 
May, I mean, we can talk about this kind of the mental health. We've talked about moving on. Mace, does it make you sad to like see stuff like that? Like, do you do you look back and you're like, God, I miss it? Or does it, or do you kind of avoid it? Or am I the only one that's like, I don't want to see that because I don't want to be sad. I don't like that. <laughs> no, like I, in, I mean, I feel like I see so much demo team stuff on my social media feeds constantly that it's just there like every single day I see stuff. Yeah. Um. So it doesn't really make I, I think it's cool that that specific team's experience was documented in such like a vivid, amazing way. I'm like, wow, I wish someone would have captured footage like that when I was flying because it's just mm -hmm. like they're going to have that forever. And it's just such high quality, amazing um, camera work. But other than that, it's not like I miss the flying. It's just like that's a cool experience to be part of. And I think it should have a wide reach, right? Coming off of Top Gun's popularity, there's a lot of appetite for it. Yeah. So, yeah. And I know a lot of the people that are on the team that was filmed for it. So it'll be cool to see how much they show the personalities and the interactions like in the brief and the debrief and how that's filtered versus, you know, just like it is when you're in the room with them and you know them. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. But you're still up for like, let's say a civilian fighter jet opportunity came along. You'd still fly, right? I mean, you're not. Oh, yeah, like, that'd be fun. Yeah, you're still you'd still go fly and dogfight or something, right? You're not just like, oh, I don't want to fly anymore. No, it's not like that. It's kind of like okay. I did what I wanted to do and I was Perfect. ready to do the next thing. So it's it's not like a regret or miss it thing. It's like yeah. that was a chapter and now I'm in a new one. Hell yeah. Uh FedEx pilot 14 says he's got Tom Katz. Uh hello from Louisiana. Soon to be the 159th fighter wing. Work on F 15C someday. Good for you, dude. That's that awesome. Fresno? Make them tell you no. No, dude. That's uh Wait, oh no, that's here, Louisiana. Louisiana, I was gonna say, why? All right, never mind. Says it right in the, the comment, Donkey Kong. Yeah. Donkey Kong. Read. Uh, Mace, my daughter loved all your flying videos and really misses your flying ponytail. <laughs> what is a flying ponytail? Yeah, the my braid would stick out of the back of my helmet, and then I would always mm -hmm. mount the GoPro like suctioned against the canopy just behind my head. <laughs> so a lot of videos inverted or like an eight point roll or a four point you'd see the braid like for the eight point roll, it, the braid would just like swing each point. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. That's awesome. That's and it so became cool. like the G meter. Uh, people really loved it. And it was cool, right? Cause little girls that are watching it, yeah. you can't tell otherwise, like we all look the same with our helmets on. So it became like this cool symbol. That is cool. <laughs> wow. Uh, Lena Lee Garcia says if the Marines had their own flight demo squadron, what would they be called? Go worst answer wins the Crayola Blue Angels. Yeah, it's, it's, called the, it's called the Blue Angels. The Crayolas. <laughs> no, the the Blues are uh, Navy and Marines. Yeah. So. Gonky, for the yeah. love of God, read the question. It says worst answer wins. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> that was definitely the worst answer. Thank you. <laughs> Try again, Gonky. Give me something funny. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Two days of being in the military and all of a sudden. Dude, it, it, yeah, a lot of driving. You're, you, you've gone full Bob on me is what you've done. You've, you've, <laughs> I need uh, AI to help me with these questions. Adam says, my <laughs> picture is just a Snapchat filter. So glad you're all able to live my dream of flying a pointy jet. Oh, thanks, Adam. Uh, MJ says, hey, mover Gonky. Been away for a fortnight. That sounds metric. Kent, great start to the week with the show again. Outstanding to see Mace back. Respect for your lost comrades. Gonky went through a similar anniversary last week, gone but never forgotten on and upwards. Thanks, MJ. Um, actually, I think we're coming up on Bama Faulkner, too. I think that's in April. Isn't it crazy how like time feels so skewed? Oh, I know. I when know. you're like, oh, it's been six years. Oh, it's been 13 yeah. years. And you're like, Wait, years. Yeah, that was 16. yesterday. Since yeah. since Jinx and Bama, and it's like, holy crap, how is this even? Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, man. We're talking All like right. old people. We are. Well, not <laughs> me. It's me and you, Gonky. <laughs> yeah. Hey, back to what we're talking about. The F-15X E-Pause. Boy, these are a lot of words, huh? But it's really yeah. cool. And I kind of geeked out on this one. Because, I, dude, as a Viper guy... I'm not supposed to like this jet, but I really like the EX. Like everything I've seen on this jet, and I've got a buddy from OTS that's actually flying it that I've been trying to talk him to come on the channel, which he's like, yeah, because he's, he's still actively doing it, which I understand. But um, it's such an awesome airplane. 
dude, it, it just has so many capabilities. And I saw this article and I was like, you know what? This is just one more cool thing it does. And this is kind of geeky, but it's got an advanced electronic warfare system called, because they love their acronyms, the Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System or EPAWS. B B A E system builds the EPAWS. And what it is, is uh, allows fighters to monitor, jam, deceive threats in highly contested environments, provides radar warning, geolocation, situational awareness, and self-defense capabilities. It allows it to move more freely and deeply, so to speak, in enemy territory and counter air defense systems. It'll be a central component of the F-15EX, uh, now expanding into dozens of F-15Es as well. Uh, it's a $293 million contract that Boeing is doing. It's a leap in technology, improved lethality, combat capabilities, uh, and degraded environments against advanced threats uh, has set the baseline for EW within the fighter community. Yes, cognitive abilities were tested last May in Northern Edge 2023. Two F-15EXs took part in 70 sorties that tested how quickly EPAWS or cognitive EW capabilities can react to electromagnetic threat, magnetic threats. It had not previously encountered in a busy, unpredictable environment. Uh, it did great. It said, uh, our close collaboration with the U.S. Air Force allows us to mature uh, EPAWS, cognitive processing capabilities. It doesn't say, or I missed it, this this isn't e AI, right? What? Like, it, uh, it's not based on, like, oh. machine learning, AI, any kind of stuff like that? I don't think so. I just think it's cool. And if it is, I mean, I think that's where we're headed if that's not yeah. what it is now, right? AI being able to get all the trons and go, okay, this is how I jam this threat. This is how I deceive this threat. This is how, you know, I, I, I cloak. Cause we've always talked about the two different schools of thought. One is stealth where you actually try to make the radar cross section as tiny as possible. And one is, deception via you know jamming either barrage noise some kind of you know you're putting trons out there and typically that's a it's a sledgehammer way of doing things but if you do it very elegantly where it doesn't affect your own systems or the systems of your buddies it can be super effective and it can be something that uh really enhances your survivability in a contested or degraded environment or denied environment so i think that's really cool that they're doing that and I, I honestly, I, th I think that's a much more cost effective way of doing that. of taking a, a fourth gen platform and actually just making it survivable just based on technology. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think I mean, it's the price factor, right? Like someone just yeah. asked about Raptors, <laughs> like why not just build more Raptors? No. Yeah. The, the other cool thing we really, I mean, you talk about, um, <clears throat> taking the fourth gen jet and putting all the electronic stuff in it. The nice thing about um, all the jamming and whatnot is that stuff can change, right? So as as the bad guys, you know, figure out ways to detect you, you can electronically change your jam. You don't have to completely redesign your airplane, right? I mean, you design a stealth right. airplane. They figure out how to how to track it. Well, now, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I think. It's like you said, cost effective. I, I mean, when I was a new Hornet guy, I think I mentioned it before. <clears throat> we fought a Learjet with a jammer pod, and my first time doing it, like I was blown away. I mean, we were cocky. The guys like, "What do you guys want?" Like level one to ten, we we're like ten. We never saw. <laughs> I mean, he, we saw him as he split our formation. We're like, "Okay, let's do three. You know, so <laughs> it's you know, and he just had a pod on, it and that. You know, I was like, oh, wow. I mean, really, that's, you know, like you said, it, it is. It can be a sledgehammer uh, way of doing business, man, but it does work. Well, uh, that's a Russian thing. You know, I mean, oh, if, yeah. if you're just throwing trons out, that's the sledgehammer. But if you're, you know, smartly receiving a signal, processing a signal, and then determining a way to defeat that signal, dude, that is a very, that's a finesse. There's yeah. something to that on, on the battlefield. And it goes to the sensor fusion concept because that's what, that's what, the 21st century battlefield is it going to be about, or it already is about sensor fusion and information. If you can take information and use that to defeat your enemy, then you've got a leg up. And, and the smarter we are with that, especially when we're going to talk about, you know, loyal wingmen and stuff like that. If you're using that in a, a linked environment, now it's not just you, it's everybody else on your team. 
and suddenly, you know, you, you've just done it cheaply. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, uh, I think Boeing has a valid, uh, BAE. It sorry. ain't Boeing. Boeing's paying BAE. It's BAE mm -hmm. is doing this. This is, I, I, I mean, combined with the EX, I'm saying it's a, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's I get a it. You're trying not to suicide yourself. I understand. You don't want to <laughs> try to make up for all the stuff from earlier. You don't want to. Okay. <laughs> I love Boeing. I, love, I need to be wearing my Boeing, Boeing shirt. I was going to say, why don't you have a Boeing shirt on? I need a Boeing yeah. shirt on. Boeing number one. <laughs> the hat. Yeah, the hat. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, Mover, I mean, you're right. That EX in itself is awesome. And then when you apply, you know, this to it, it's like, holy cow. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Mace, you've seen it, you know, flying the Viper, you know, when, when, when you can effectively, you know, see everything and do everything and they can't see you. It's a winning day. It's a great day. Yeah. And it feels terrible to be on the other side of that, <laughs> which we've all experienced as well. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. And that doesn't just apply air to air. I mean, that is everything, you know, uh, the suppression of enemy air defense. Um, I mean, that's why the growler is the growler, right? That's that's their one of their biggest. I mean, their biggest mission is is yeah. taking trons and making bad trons into good trons. But the idea that you know you can take an airplane and do it in a cost effective manner that was the Russian doctrine from the beginning. That's why you know you didn't really see a, a stealth until Su fifty seven because. You know, we were like, we're going to buy Raptors and F-35s. And they're like, yeah, well, we'll put a big jammer on this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Su-30 and good luck. See you at the merge. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So, <laughs> so, you know, and then there, then ESOs came out, you know, and, and radar tech has improved. I mean, it, it, anything's defeatable. You just have to be able to, like Gonky said, to be able to upgrade. It's easier to upgrade with a, you know, yeah, software update. Refresh the app. Okay, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, we, that's amazing to me to hear that from you, Gonky. But of all the people talking about refreshing an app, because I had to do that today <laughs> for my virtual mailbox. I was like, why aren't I getting in my mail anymore? And they, they I called the customer service. Like, oh, refresh, your, boy. refresh your app. I said, oh, <laughs> fixes everything. That's like the yeah. new equivalent of is it plugged in? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. And is your phone on? Oh yeah. Okay. The only thing I will say though, the downside of this is when it quits working, you're in trouble. You know, unlike stealth, which is kind of inherent. You know, where it, you, know, you you may have that capability all the time as long as they haven't defeated it. But odds are, you know, your radar cross section is always going to be small. You know, so it's always going to make it a little bit more challenging for them to find you. But if this thing, you know, how many times have you had a jet system that's like, well, that's broke. I'm just flying with this. Oh, never. Every time. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. I mean, Mace, you flew the like the ALQ two thirteen and the the block thirty. You know, it's like, well, some of it works. I mean, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it yeah. works great. Sometimes, okay. You know. I mean, sometimes, I said this yeah. will work most of the F. time for at least yeah. a while. Yeah. yeah, that's true. It is brand new, so it's under warranty. Right. Because Boeing <laughs> makes all great. Things new off the flight line. Everything Every, they make, everything works, man. Is, when it's brand new, it's it's perfect. They have no issues whatsoever. All right, uh, back to the audience before we get narked on our own channel. Uh, all right, we talk. Wait, no, is this no? You know, Davy says for the new Blue Angel movie, they had a prior Blues pilot film the formation solos and chase. Mm -hmm. They had IMAX camera pods in the pylons. Would that be oh, something wow. you could do, Mace? I'm curious what he was flying. If he's still like, is this a active duty military pilot flying another one of their jets chasing because we would do that all the time for photo chase with our own public affairs shop or if this is someone that was like out is flying a private aircraft that works for the production company i would say that to answer the question being the instructor of a badass master class the answer is yes it doesn't matter what it is l39 it, the answer is yes Right. Like, that's all you have to say is, is yes, yes, I could. Do that. that would be fun, actually. You should quote Ghostbusters, because if someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> yes. Remember, she's humble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
just don't. I feel like it's a very there's a it's a very specific group of people that are in that niche of high speed jet cinematography, right? It's not a big yeah. career field. It's like right. a few like big names. People. Yeah. <laughs> that do it for all of those. I still say the answer is yes. Big Chi says, is it true that active jamming is an act of war? I haven't read the Geneva Convention lately. Uh, maybe <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> probably not. Because if so, I've probably declared war yeah, on yeah. like a couple <laughs> countries. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico, yeah. uh, Cuba, Iran. No, I'm sorry. Uh, legal reasons that's a joke. Gonky is so good at spontaneity. Oh, MJ loves you. <laughs> Apparently, cyberbullying too, but I don't. Yeah, T Wolf Jaeger says doing operational checks on modern EW systems gives you a very many bothans died to give us this information kind of feeling. It's scary how smart the sensors have become on fourth and fifth gen. Against fifth gen, that's what Top Gun Maverick will be. He's just going to tron everything and just lie straight and level. Yeah, all, he just needs one growler, man. That's all his sixty-year-old <laughs> back can take. God, you'd hope so. That Mach ten ejection. <laughs> that's three ejections. Yeah, you know, yeah. at a certain point, ah, uh, he his, I mean, <laughs> his VA disability's got to be one hundred and fifty percent. He's also probably like five foot two at this point. Yeah. I think he no, started Mover. out that way. I think he started out five foot two. I don't. <laughs> no, dude, Mover the VA will be like you're ten percent disabled. He's mad. Can't walk. Your foot yeah, shorter. Mad. Yeah. The the third movie is him wheeling himself around the DX. <laughs> uh, Taking eight hundred milligrams of ibuprofen. Yeah, five times a day, <laughs> like candy. <laughs> uh, oh, this is cool. AZ Cub Driver says, "Hi, Mace. Former tower controllers at Nellis from ninety six to ninety nine. What's the story behind the ditty the T Birds did just before Taxi? We used to listen to your freak and always uh, got a kick out of it. Hmm. Y'all sing or say something funny." Maybe it's changed. I mean, because we do like the gang signs, like the hand symbols to our crew chiefs as we taxi out, which people always ask about. But we don't like sing anything or say anything. We all check in, you know, one, two, three, four. Well, one doesn't check in. He initiates the check in down the line. Uh, I don't know. Mace, did you know in the Navy they check themselves in? Like they say like river one, one check river one, one. Just in case they didn't hear themselves. <laughs> like Gawky's face. Gawky. I'm, it's because <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Like when I first got to 204, I'm like, why are you checking yourself in? You're you. River uh, one one checking on base, river one one. It's like, dude, you you said it. I know you said it. I heard you. You sound yeah. like Mace, but you know. All right, that might be a little weird, but like literally, that's the only time we do any calm. Like the Air Force is the exact opposite. We're constantly oh. checking each. <clears throat> that like, was no, that was T thirty eight world. They checked in on every frequency. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's because I mean, if you're doing a you know an LFE, it's like you know, if you're if you're checking in your flight of rivers or whatever, um, that's how you announce, hey, rivers, heads up. We're about to check in river one one and then that you know one two or one three they all i think i i would think Do it's Navy a primer guys not know to pay attention it gives them enough time to get their hand on the radio <laughs> what were we you much. know it's the navy <laughs> dude we're spreading our wings we're like you know i'm troubleshooting <laughs> i'm troubleshooting a jet is that what you call it yeah, uh, troubleshooting the joke. Oh. Troubleshooting the jet, dude. I'm trying to. I love like this it. joke could go on for a long I time. I love it. It's so great. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> thank you. Finally, Mace, you're uh, always invited on this show. We need to get you on with Wombat, so it's two v two at least. No, dude. I, look, I always said if you could take the best from both services and put them together, you would have a really kick-ass branch. Well, the other thing they do is they change call signs, and that used to freak me out, yeah. too. We'd be River 1-1 going to the airspace, and all of a sudden, okay, now you're Heat 1-1. I'm like, why? It's your tactical just, call sign. Use the same one. Mm, no. 
like in one sortie, you would switch call signs yeah. while airborne. Yeah. 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 Once you're in the airspace, you're somebody totally different. But we'd have our ATC you... call sign and then we'd have our tactical call sign. Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's awesome. <laughs> How many times did you call yourself the wrong thing? All the time. Uh, H1, H1. No, you know, I'm sure there's a really, I'm sure there's some weapon school top gun nerd that's like gawky it's this you know there's a reason for it but <laughs> gawky's they never terrible told me defending his heritage <laughs> they never told me i never asked i just executed <laughs> valid soldier bro <laughs> get to see snakes and let's go all right i feel like there's a patch from each of our branches doing that every time we open our mouths right yeah. I, like i thought it was weird that like of this yeah, i told you weird, like the you know whoever uh uh like cat one whatever oh that's you know that's the squadron commander flying speaking of uh, patches mace are you allowed to erase side to side because you're a female is that all because you're not supposed did they never tell you that maybe they did have i not known this whole time <laughs> go on oh, <laughs> what are you talking about mover <laughs> uh-oh state secrets here uh, all right kids so when us. you're in a when you're in a, a briefing room right unless you're an eagle guy you're not supposed to erase side to side you're supposed to erase up and down did you know that why no because it shakes your ass <laughs> no so one ever told like... me this at all do you i mean does i do you do, i don't think your butt moves that much when you move your arm oh yeah it does oh yeah no it does <laughs> Mace, you never yeah. noticed you were the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah. Up and down, not side to side. Uh, I missed that rule on day one. Uh, I think intentionally, probably. I think I wasn't a <laughs> There's probably more than that than that one. Oh, <laughs> uh, but you're a good sport. That's funny. Uh, John wants to know what version of the iPhone Yankee's on. My bet is 12 or older. <laughs> No way. This bad boy's got Dude. conformal tanks. <laughs> Look at that. High speed, baby. It's like a sat phone, dude. Like no, it's a SE3, third gen. It was I new like two your, years ago. I think he meant your operating system, which you probably don't even know what that means. <laughs> it, it's on. <laughs> Is that an operating system? Uh, MJ says uh, M, he or she <laughs> or they, them needs to make friendly sarcasm more apparent. Oh, AZ Cub Driver says they used to say a short poem as each one checked in. Oh, high flight. Yeah. <laughs> well, but that's not short at all. We, we definitely didn't do that. I, the last air show of the season, sometimes people would write one of the second year people would write a poem that they would read on the taxi out and it was just generally a roast of like everyone else on the team <laughs> mace erases side to side <laughs> I was like i don't get it <laughs> what guys what are you guys talking about what's wrong with that that's funny I said you liked it uh john says mover with the deep intel oh boy <laughs> yeah there goes <laughs> that again all right, let's get back on track. The uh, I can't get rid of this comment. It won't go away. Gonky. Hmm. The last Harrier pilots yeah. have been formed. <laughs> That's right. So what? The summer? I don't know. Six months ago, the Marines closed down the Legacy Hornet training, right? On Miramar. It looks like they've uh, graduated their last class of <clears throat> Harrier pilots. So Captain Joshua Corbett and Sven Jorgensen have completed their training so they've been training in marines in the harriers to me it's crazy since 1983 which i didn't i didn't realize they were how long i've been existing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right <clears throat> so last two are done two in a class is i don't know if that's normal as a f-18 person that was that would be kind of a small class but um they're gonna fly the harrier until 2026 and then you know, the Marines have put all their eggs in the F-35 basket. So these two guys will probably end up flying the F-35 at some point. Still using the Harrier. Obviously, like Mover, we've covered some of the stuff they've been doing. <clears throat> or not or doing. Not doing. Or, yeah. not doing or not doing with the Houthis. Um, and I think it's crazy. I mean, I, <clears throat> I'll ask both of you, you, uh, you guys, as far as the, the Harrier goes, to me, it's like a, it's like a unicorn. I think I've seen one 
in real life, like in my entire yeah. flying career at an air show. And it like, it's got a pretty capable radar. Like it has the same radar in it that the legacy Hornet had. It carries AMRAM. Like it's a pretty capable airplane, but like they would never, all of our exercise, they, we never had Harriers. Uh, maybe once I saw one flying in El Centro, but I mean, I, to me, I, our, when the Navy uh, had the legacy rag, so VFA 125. So I was an IP there <clears throat> when they closed down Hornet uh, training, A through D model. The XO was always a Marine and he was a Hornet guy. <clears throat> and he always wore this patch of a Harrier. It just said, scarier, stop the madness, <laughs> you know? So like, you know, and I talked to him a little bit about it and it was almost like even, even within the, the Marines, like they, the Harrier community was kind of a outcast, but I don't know what, have you, have you guys ever had any experience with them, seeing them, flying them, fighting them? I've literally yeah. only seen them at air shows as well. Right. <laughs> and no, like I, twice I, in three years. Yeah. I've fought them. Really? Oh. Mm -hmm. Scared the crap out of me, dude. So, uh, cause we had a Marine guy in our squadron and they came down cause dude, Homestead, we'd always get like, cause we had Chumax, we'd always get all kind of weird jets and stuff coming out. And we, I was the adversary, the bandit for a two V one. And I'm like, dude, this is going to be easy. Right. You know, maybe club and baby seals. Cause I'm in a clean Viper and they're in that. And I didn't get warned until after that they do this bat turn where they move the nozzles. And they can just point the jet and you're like, oh my God. And I just went straight up. Like I was like, nope. And just up into the Bozo sphere and then came down and, you know, gunned them both. But that initial turn was like eye watering. You're just like, holy crap. What did he just do? Uh, the other experience I had was not Marines, but the, uh, the Brits. Really? Cause I was doing an international red flag. Yeah. This is how old I am. Gonky. Uh, we were doing an international red flag and, Mace, before the show, we were talking about the, hey, I'm going to shoot somebody in the face, so to speak, uh, you know, because my essay is degraded. Yeah. Same yeah. standard act from this from this group. Different guy. Uh, we're going cold. And he's like, uh, target group, bro, you know, bullseye, whatever. And it's like, that's the strikers. That's your own people. They were like running in at 100 feet behind us you know to go attack the target and he's like declare a group and it's like no friendly friend you know this is our guy he's behind us that's where he's supposed to be he's going to the target and they were harriers they were the the ba you know the ba sea harriers or whatever the the british uh they had come down and i was i was so impressed that they were flying at a hundred feet like to me that was as an air force guy who's, who was limited to 500 feet at the time that was like holy crap and it was it was pretty cool i mean i saw him like you could see him down there you know and you're like god that like it's desert and then jet and yeah. it's there's like not much in between so uh i think that was there might have been one other time uh we we did some stuff with harriers but i mean they were always really cool i mean did you pilots <clears throat> are different breed. they're like helicopter pilots and fighter pilots at the same time yeah. Yeah, did you actually like get a hangout with the the Brits afterwards? At, they were at the debrief, but they I think they were staying on base and we were doing the uh hey, we're going to stay downtown. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> Standard. <laughs> like two of us is leaving after the debrief, we got to go. Yeah. But going back <laughs> to your article, Gonky, uh I think that's a you were saying to a class of two, so you're either the best or the worst in your class. Man, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. You know, um, there was uh, one or two. So when I was in T-45s as a student, there was one or two Marines that got Harriers. And like, you know, <clears throat> Marines are just like, they have that. I got to support the 18 year old in the ditch with his gun with my bazillion dollar fighter jet. So like some of those guys wanted the Harrier because they're like, oh, I want to get in there and I want to get in bed with my troops, you know, whatever. Um, that's an air force. Why thing, we so. have the, huh? <laughs> that's more of an air force thing, but go on. <laughs> get in bed with your troops is not a Marine thing. I don't think, I, you know, uh, you know, it's like they want to play infantry with their gazillion dollar fighter jet, which is, you know, why we have the, 
the F thirty five B. So, um, I don't know, man. I, they could have been top of their class. I don't know. Mover, I do think you gave a really good example of when it was appropriate to take the fight in the vertical in that story. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Because you have nowhere else to go. You're right. scared. Your advantage <laughs> is your your thrust, so to speak. Yeah. It turned into a P-51. <laughs> Went down. Uh, Gonky's bullying the small classes, according to the kids at home. Uh, also, I mean, you know about true lies. They blow up the bridge. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> remember that yeah. yeah and then they blew up a lot of stuff in sure blew realized. up a terrorist with an amp aim nine they sure did they, yeah they used I him and the aim nine to take out a helicopter him. yeah i mean <laughs> that's called efficiency <laughs> um yeah so sa sorry to see it go it's always sad like last of anything right last of you know because it's we're moving away from the good old days it's sad this is how old people talk mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. fourth gen is, is kind of old, not old. Like, and then we're gonna get into the autonomous stuff uh, uh, that. Yeah. uh cartel or one or whatever that's just that's too many consonants and whatever <laughs> as the canopies close on each successive jet before they taxi take off the pilot sings a song to the tune of camp town races each pilot makes up his own his or her own words which are often off color well there's your problem this century, we don't do that here. It's frowned upon. When is this from? What's the setting for this? The 96 to 99. That guy, so he's talking about the 96 to 99 Thunderbird team with their poems. We're still on that topic. Mm. Hmm. You didn't do that, I'm guessing. No, PA, yeah. you know, every, yeah. we're the face of the Air Force. Yeah. Garrett says, goodbye to the real Widowmaker. Fat Amy is welcomed. <clears throat> Cal says, everyone asks what the fast, what's the fastest jet, fastest you have flown. So I'm going to ask, what's the slowest you have flown in a military jet? Also, Tomcats. <laughs> Tomcats. Oh, dude, zero. <sighs> yeah. I've departed. I think I've been going <laughs> backwards, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done the. The it's oh god, amount of airspeed and ideas here. Yeah. Hopefully, not altitude. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah. you're good. No, Mace, that's a tough one for you because of the whole limiter. Oh, but I, yeah, you could still, I guess, do it. Did you go to the Edward Spin and Pew class? No, we tried to schedule it a few times while I was at Nellis and just never could align schedules. Um, I don't know, I'm sure I got very slow during BFM while I was young and dumb at Masawa and I didn't even, wasn't even looking at my airspeed. So I can't tell you, uh, the high alpha maneuver mm -hmm. on the team, 115 knots is your target. 105 yeah. is your min and your floor is a hundred feet. So oh, some God. of the more uncomfortable, uh, situations I've ever been in. Yeah. <clears throat> the coolest flyby I ever saw at the carrier was our ex blue angel department head. He was in the spare <laughs> with bombs and stuff. He did a high alpha pass and with the ship steaming like 30 knots and him, it was, it's crazy looking. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean the, you know, they get, Hey, uh, you know, uh, Hornet fly by a mile out. We're all looking like, where is it at? And I mean, it was like forever. So if there's a all headwind right. for those, they yeah. can, it looks crazy. You're like, is that jet hovering? What's happening? Yep. Uh, and Andrew says in the RAF, the best pilots used to be selected for Harris as they took a higher level of airmanship to fly. That sounds kind of like the Navy with, you know, boat stuff. But did a let's Harrier get back. pilot tell you that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also, uh, there is that. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> faster and or funnier. Uh, we've got autonomous Vipers that... Um, are at Eglin. They've arrived. They're doing autonomous testing, the 96th and 53rd wing. It's the autonomy flying test bed program. Venom aft is designed and funded, accelerated testing of autonomy software and crewed and uncrewed aircraft. It complements autonomy data and it's going to be used for the collaborative combat air pro aircraft program and other autonomy developers. It's a pivotal chapter, uh, fostering uh, novel autonomous functions. We look forward. That's a lot of words like major elder. Let's cool it with the big words here. 
Let's just use some pilot words. But they're going to be at the 58th, having both developmental tests, operational test pilots working on it. It's a really cool thing. Uh, however, comma, there will never be a time where the Venom aircraft will fly solely by itself without a human component. So they're just testing the human in the, uh, on the loop aspect type of testing. Uh, so there's some human interaction with it as well. Uh, but tactical autonomy development focuses on speed to ramp, meaning go as fast as you can safely to ensure you get the CCA flying uh, as quickly as possible. So it's not really uh, that new of a concept for anything in general because the zombies, um, the F-16, the A's at Tyndall, they fly without a person in there all the time. Uh, I think the what the the significance of this is the what we're going to talk about here in a second the combat the CCA collaborative combat aircraft and being able to autonomously find fix target track engage you know all the stuff that we want it to do and like like we talked about before Fido Sikkim you know so I don't have to be the one that goes into that engagement zone but well, I mean what do you guys think I mean is this the the Canary in the coal mine? Is this the beginning of the end for us? I think so. I think it'll be a while. I feel like people are scared of fully autonomous. Like this this whole Skynet thing freaked people out. And so now they're all like, it's going to take over. It's going to bomb our own citizens. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, to be able to have that push forward in the yeah. bad guy land. And if it gets shot down, you're just losing equipment, not people. That's... Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's cheaper, cheaper too. I mean, yeah. Uh, losing a human is, is, I mean, you can't even put a price on it. You know, I mean, uh, obviously planners do cause that's, that's how they were operate. But you, you know, if you can save a life, uh, now on to our, probably the most controversial thing we'll talk about all night. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <sighs> Tennessee. Ah, yeah. I've been waiting for this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Tennessee passes chemtrail bill banning airborne chemtrails. Um, I guess before we read through it, I mean, Mace and the Thunderbirds, you guys would expel some obvious okay. chemicals out the back. I mean, can you confirm or deny, um, harmful or not? <laughs> Smoke oil. Is so, this <laughs> oil so that hits the heat from the engine and vaporizes it into smoke? So. I believe you, but there's it's probably a whole swath. There's probably a whole swath of people like she's lying. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't stand behind the jet with your mouth open with the smoke <laughs> running. But yeah. I mean, it's not full of like psychedelics or something. Yeah, that I know of. <clears throat> so it's a little bit of a lengthy article, but they talk about geoengineering, right? So they don't. I don't know. There's, um. <laughs> Geoengineering is controversial even among legitimate climate scientists because of the uncertainty around its usefulness and possibility of unintended outcomes. Planet-wide climate change engineering is distinct from more routine weather modifications such as cloud seeding, which increases rainfall over specific areas and is used in several U.S. states. So I, I did um, rain enhancement before I joined the military, which we actually did burn chemical expel it out into the uh into the air and the science was it would give the water molecule something to bond to and it would rain more so apparently that's not banned but <clears throat> uh the more harmful stuff is but you know uh conspiracy theorists point to white plumes of vapor uh trailing behind passenger airplanes commonly called contrails as proof of sinister and secret plots but lack of evidence for their claims the most common claim of proof is simply the aircraft contrails look different without any comparative analysis, according to a report from a Harvard geoengineering group. Mover, in your time flying larger airplanes, do you know when you're chemming? I'd never chem. <laughs> that was good. Good on you, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't... I don't chem trail. Yeah. Look, dude, here's the thing. Airlines, <laughs> like, it's so stupid, right? Because 
I did a video on this, like when I first started the channel and like, there's yeah. a lot of angry people about that because this is like their whole worldview. And there's even people that will go up and scream at the sky. Like literally you can go find it on YouTube where they're filming, you know, God, you got your, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. Uh, here's the reality. Airlines are cheap. Yep. They are trying to put as little overhead as they possibly can into those flights, which means they're not going to carry the extra weight of all these sprayers and tanks because they want to put people that pay money to fly them elsewhere. And they're the ones that are generating the white smoke. So if they're not because the airline's too cheap, then that means you have to have a fleet of thousands of aircraft in addition to this that are that's their whole job in life is to go and spray and chemtrail and all that stuff which means it's ridiculous it's stupid now like look I, I will i will play the crazy person and say well the government's funding it so they the airlines don't care man for losing revenue which i agree with you completely you're not gonna <laughs> would you where rather put it where are they put <laughs> it like I, have you I never been on an airline <laughs> like what where do you put it yeah i mean there's a science behind the white stuff that's coming you know behind the planes that are flying it out over it I, I know. <laughs> it's, yeah hot air it, meets cold moist air yeah, I, it's it's a thing you know i mean you know right as uh as fighter pilots it's like what altitude i'm gonna start conning at right because hello you give yourself away right so i mean it's it's uh yeah i'm with you tennessee good on you but i think it's you know, sure. Let's put, let's let's appease them and pass this bill. <laughs> Next, <laughs> I was gonna say, surely it has something to do with the fact that the Earth is flat and the way that gravity works. Oh it no, we're canceled. The chemtrails. You have to tip the nose down. You have to keep to, right. in order to fly with the curvature of the Earth. You have to keep bunting the nose. Yeah, you just trim the nose down. That's so actually what that Swedish guy was doing. He was following the earth's curvature and that's why he landed the second Got time because he misjudged yeah, yeah he misjudged the apparently you need to be going faster uh <laughs> than just taking off well so i mean with regard to this it doesn't actually say kim trails in it it's they don't want geoengineering which everybody's going to point to that former cia guy that's like we need to start thinking about it because of global warming blah 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 which okay I would like to think about time travel. I would like to think about faster than light travel. There's a lot of things I would love to think about, but that doesn't mean it's happening. Right. And that's, <clears throat> and I, I'll also say this article is written by the BBC, which were the ones who. Well, it's one of many. I mean, it's uh, the, it exists. I mean, the, the bill exists. It doesn't matter where yeah. you get the source. I don't know, man. <clears throat> I think we've talked about chemtrails a couple times, and I, actually, I'm, the the most surprising thing about this article is that there's actually a state actually passed something regarding. Yeah. Is that chemtrails. that surprising, really? You know what, yeah. man? Now that you say that, anything's possible. We live in America, darn it. Yeah, dream big, <laughs> dream big. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Oh man. <laughs> All right, moving ahead. I don't know. Because uh, Mace is about to be like, what's happening? Why are, why are you keeping me here this long? We're so sorry. We're, we're well, it's so my husband will be texting me like, should we eat without you? I'm Pacific time, so it's 6.50 here. So, like. Oh, God. Well, then we can talk about this for, for sure. You know this is true. The five reasons why the F-16V, although, nay, I say all of them, the F-16 is the best, but they gave us five reasons. And the summary is it's, it's, uh, oh, awesome. That jet. Sorry. And then there's a Viper. <laughs> Good so tanks. for the kids at home, the, the, pedant, the pedantic among us will say that the only Viper is this because they put a V back there behind it. F-16 V all F-16s are Vipers. Yeah. It's been that way since the beginning because it looked like Battlestar Galactica. Yep. And the first pilots were like, oh, check it out. You know, we're nerds too. And it's stuck and it's cool. It's just like the A-10 is the Warthog, not the Thunderbolt. Anyway, so they gave five reasons why it's uh, it's the best. Uh, the new ones, the ones that are coming off the assembly line right now, 
which I'm available, by the way, if they need somebody. Uh, external upgrades. 12,000 hour service life conformal fuel tanks. If you remember, they did the service life upgrade. It used to just be like 6,000 hours, then it was 8,000 hours. So this right off the factory, it's got a 12,000 hour service life before any kind of extensions or anything like that. And conformal fuel tanks, which we talked about. We talked about, you know, it gives you uh, 3,000 pounds more. However, comma, uh, you know, you lose a little bit of performance. So it might be something you want to do in close air support. The APG-83 ESA radar gives it fifth gen fighter radar capabilities. Um, I'm curious, Mace, you never flew with the, with the ESA, did you? When they I did upgraded? not. Sounded I'm awesome. Curious. Yeah, does it? I wonder if it like makes the nose any different. You know, if it reduces weight, weighs the same, adds weight. You know, I I, I would think it takes away weight, but I don't know. Yeah, there's no dish. Uh, Legion <laughs> Erst. Um, so they've also got the Legion Pod. It's infrared search and track, which is awesome. Passive detection, and that goes back to what we were talking about before. You get more sensors on a fourth gen aircraft, it becomes a really good you know, capable current aircraft and then auto G cast, which we've talked about. Um, it's, it's a lifesaver. You know, that's the thing it would have saved my buddy jinx, um, that passed away doing BFM and G locked would have saved Cajun had it been installed. I mean, obviously, you know, he's a right. Thunderbird, but still, right. uh, there are many examples. So it's good to have, um, the upgraded modular MC, uh, the McDo, is it McDo? Is that what they're calling it? MC. Mission computer. Big do might be from something else I'm thinking of, but it's a six by eight inch center pedestal display, high computing power to the avionics, uh, large color display, dude, situational awareness. That's what you need. And then, uh, that's really it. That's, that's the five, but I would argue the fact that it's still coming off the assembly line, still got parts and support. You're still developing new tech for it. Uh, maybe it'd be cool if they got the BAE sensor suite. Maybe it does. Maybe it already has something. We're just not talking about it. But uh, Mace, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, it looks pretty legit. I think they should call it the Viper. That <laughs> seems like a novel idea. Uh, no, it's like I think about. I mean, it's been a minute since I've been in a tactical squadron, so I'm sure there's been a lot of improvements. But the limited SA that you have at some points when yeah. it's like a large force exercise and when you had some of your fifth gen friends there, how much that was helpful and to just bring in even some of that situational awareness into your own jet without being stealth would still just be hugely beneficial. Yeah. Especially for like missions that you don't need stealth, like alert, yeah. you know, I mean, air sovereignty alert where you're just defending the homeland, you know, and you've got to go pick out a, a Cessna or small target. Uh, Gonky, you, did you fly, you flew the legacy before you flew the super, right? What was the different? Was it like, Oh Massive. God mode. I mean, Massive. going from something that didn't have the best radar to ESA. Yeah. I, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even have data link. Um, we had no link, no, not there was radar. I have my radar. I have my spider card on my knee, <clears throat> mini board card. I have my ears and I have my, my pencil. And I would dr literally draw the initial picture out and be like, Okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, and then uh, when I got to when I was a instructor, uh, it wasn't until uh, they stood down the Legacy Hornet Squadron, and then we all became Super Hornet uh, IPs. And that's that was my first uh, that was my first taste with all the toys, and I was completely blown away. And I I've mentioned it in the past, like <clears throat> there for a while, I would teach. Uh, you know, we had uh, Sims, right? They were all linked up and. Many times I would uh, teach an air to air sortie to a class of legacy uh, Hornet pilots and super Hornet pilots. We'd all brief together and then <clears throat> I would go run the event with the legacy Hornet guys with no toys. And it was, you know, standard get shot in the face, you know, like <clears throat> blind, no joy. It's like herding cats, right? And then I would go into the Super Hornet with all the toys. And if I let them use all the toys, it went like per, almost as briefed. But uh, it was wild, man. It was. And it's yeah. even better now, you know. So that's it's. Yeah. I think having the F-16 platform, which is a proven 
known good platform. It's good for BFM. It's it's you know it's good for all that stuff. And then adding updated technologies as a lower cost alternative to an F thirty five or something like that is is huge. I mean it's it's. I think we should have done that to augment our fleet. Like once we realized we weren't going to buy, you know, a thousand Raptors or whatever, I think we should have been like, okay, copy. You know, we've got our day one fighters and then we've got the, you know, we've got more support. So it's, you know, cause what happens with attrition? You know, if you don't have enough fighters, it doesn't matter how cool the tech is. If you, you know, are breaking them or they're getting, uh, you know, they're having issues or whatever. So, um, uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we'll do the mental health minute, and then we will get to some questions from you guys. Uh, Mace, this is a, 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 a very important topic, and your master class, your badass master class, yeah. talks about this, and I figured you could help lead us off on wiggling our toes. Yeah, I like that you literally. picked you picked that theme. I mean, literally, we can all wiggle our toes right now if you want. We can like count down. I'll do it together. That wouldn't be weird at all. Um, <laughs> you're like the look on your face. Class. You're like, yeah, please yeah. let her be kidding. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I kind of teed the class up a little mm -hmm. bit at the beginning, but I, my message and you know what I talk about and my speaking that I do and everything is pretty focused on like mental health and mental fortitude and grit. And just how we see ourselves in the world and how when we can flip that a little bit, like just the possibilities open up um, and it can, without changing any of our external circumstances, we can completely change what we're capable of. And so it's been so cool to do that for people as a speaker, but I had all these things I had learned during my whole journey through that in my career. And I really wanted to bring them into something that was more actionable like storytelling, but still tools that anyone could implement in their lives that they could actually bring in, create new habits that would serve them well, and then go do these big things. And so that's where the Badass Masterclass came in, into play. And the whole thing is recognizing our negative inner talk tracks that we all have. Um, I call it the inner critic. It's been called head trash by people. Um, it's just those negative things that we get so used to hearing that we say to ourselves that they become just wrapped in with our identity. And the more that you talk to yourself in that way, the more it becomes just your norm and it becomes what you're comfortable with. And your brain actually with how like neuroplasticity works, the more that you do it, the more your brain gets used to it. And then the more you do it. So it's like this revolving cycle where you kind of can fall into this spiral and it can be very hard to read the label from the inside of the jar. Like it can be super hard to have perspective on it when you're in it. And yeah. so the, and I was in it when I was in Japan and you've heard me tell that story on this show before. Um, like to the point of, I was for sure depressed and should have sought help, but it just wasn't even a thing. Then this was like 2012, 2013 timeframe. Um, and I could not generate that perspective for myself. And so the course takes people through that. I call it the 30,000 foot view which is just like zooming out, separating yourself from your negative inner voice so that when you start down that path, you recognize it and then you have the ability to choose something different. Um, and then just identifying those stale scripts, which is what I call those, those lines we feed to ourselves all the time, but they're stale. They're not serving you. Um, but it takes a lot of things that you all are very familiar with from your backgrounds that it can be used outside of the cockpit, outside of aviation. Um, there's some stuff in there about chair flying and just how powerful visualization can be. Um, and I don't know about you, but I went to pilot training with zero civilian time. And if I had not spent a lot of time chair flying, I would not have made it through the program. There's no way. Like creating that mental rehearsal is what allowed me to feel prepared enough to go do these flights with new concepts gave me the confidence in the cockpit. And there's a whole bunch of areas that you can use that concept um, outside of aviation. And then I'll get into wiggle your toes because because that's a fun one and you threw it up there. So I first heard of wiggling your toes when I was trying to learn to air refuel and I was just like sucking at it. Um, you know, standard, you get into a PIO. So pilot induced oscillation, too high, too low, too much closure, 
return to stern boom upper sends you back and your whole flight is there waiting on you and you're just like damn it like this is embarrassing i have to buy beer and everyone is watching me um and so an instructor told me they're like you're over gripping you're like over stressed out you're super tensed up the stick and the viper really sensitive like that is causing these this porpoise that you're getting into so when you start to feel that i want you to focus on your toes and your boots and wiggle your toes and i was just like this sounds dumb <laughs> <laughs> But then the next flight, I went out and I literally did it. I was like approaching the boom and I was starting to get into those PIOs and I was like focusing on my toes and I'm wiggling them and all like I just relaxed. It like brought me out of like that hyper vigilant state. And I was like, that really worked well for me thinking back throughout my career. And so I talked to a neuroscientist about it. I was like, hey, what like this is the thing. What is that? And she she was like, I love that because there's proven science behind why that works. And it's like our, our brain waves, you know, our brain operates in these different states. It can be like super hyper vigilant if we're really focused, like if you're a surgeon performing mm -hmm. surgery or a fighter pilot trying to air fuel, or you're kind of in that mode of like fight or flight, like a lot is happening. And then there's kind of like lower states all the way to being asleep or unconscious. And one state isn't necessarily better over another. What's important is that you have the flexibility to regulate to the correct state at the correct time. And so a lot of people, a lot of people with PTSD come home and they're like stuck in this hyper vigilant brainwave. And the more you spend time there, the more that becomes your norm. And those uh, neurons like get, you know, they're, they're the ones that are used to those pathways and they get used more and more. And so that becomes just what you default to. And there's physical disruptors that you can use to bring you out of that state, like back into your body for a minute where you can think a little bit more logically and you can choose how you're going to respond to something rather than reacting in a way you don't want to. And wiggle your toes is just one example. Um, and so that's why it works. And I was just thought this was super badass that there's actually science behind it. And so I put together this whole course that takes people through six weeks. It drops once per week, but it's self-paced. It's pre-recorded. And then there's a community that goes along with it. And so everyone is going to start at the same time. It's on sale till April 15th. And then April 18th, we're all starting together. So not only are these people working with me as I bring them through this framework of tools and like have them implement them in their lives each week, but they get to interact with each other. And so they get to hear like the aha moments that different people have. Um, and I think it's just going to be a really neat way for those people to connect with each other. I am excited to see the impact because the most rewarding thing about what I do now is hearing people's success stories afterwards. And I get a lot of those just from like a 45 minute or a one hour keynote. And so to give them so much more in a format and at a price point, that's just really accessible to most people. I'm just super excited about. So that was a long pitch. Uh, oh. That's the badass masterclass. It's fun to say. <laughs> yeah. Do you, have do you have questions? I feel like I just went on. <laughs> feel like <laughs> badass already. Um, no, I mean what you're talking about. I mean, I learned the wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, and UPT and the T38 because that's what they would talk about to kind of calm down, flying fingertip. Yep. Um, one thing that's interesting, you're talking about the self talk. Uh, I've heard, maybe I haven't heard. I just made it up in my head, but you wouldn't talk to your best friend like that. Right? right. You're you're talking to yourself and saying, you know, you're never going to make it. It's never going to work out. You know, the never, never, never. But think about the advice you would give a friend. You'd be a horrible friend if you did that. But why would you do that to yourself? Why would you? Yeah. But yet we're OK with telling ourselves that we're, you know, you're a loser. You're never going to it's not going to work. Um, you know, I, I got into a point where I felt like it was bad luck if I did anything but thought the worst, right? Like if you, if you think the worst, you can't be disappointed. And then if something okay happens, you're like, Oh, okay, well that's better versus what you talk about this positive attitude of, you know, I'm, uh, it's actualization, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing it, I'm making it my reality. And then the next thing is it's actually happening. Um, you know, I mean, that's why we chair fly, right? If you, if you chair flew every mission going wrong, and you doing the wrong things, then you would think about the wrong things. It would just be in your head. We chair fly uh, to do that. So I think that's that's really cool that you're doing that. We'll put the link 
uh, in the description when this video becomes its own video and then for, for the on-demand stuff there. Uh, but on the mental health topic, I think that's a great like topic in general is just because I haven't figured that out. You know, I went through some stuff very similar uh, in 2021 and then again in 2022 for vastly different reasons. But, you know, you get into this death spiral of telling yourself that things are, are just bad. And it's going to go worse. And that's what would get my, you know, the cortisol up, the every, you know, all that, all the physiological responses would come from the fact that your mind does not stop. And the only way I could break it was, you know, breathing exercises, like you talked about, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, singing, you know, if you, if you, sometimes you can break it just by, you know, simple, you know, singing a cool song to yourself, you know, I mean, it, it just depending on what was going on and eventually it, it goes away, you know, and eventually there is life on that other side. Um, so, you know, I tell people when you're going through something bad, make sure you've got this support network, you know, like, like what you're talking about, where you can go to a friend or, or go to someone else, you know, use the resources available. Mental health counseling is always, uh, an option, uh, military family readiness. If you're in the military, uh, military one source, uh, nine, eight, eight, if you're thinking about hurting yourself, uh, don't make a <clears throat> temporary problem permanent, but, uh, Gonky, what do you think, man? Yeah, Mace, that's awesome. I mean, I, for sure, I'm my own worst enemy. <clears throat> you know, I and I think I think any A type personality um, is like that, right? We're always, you know, it's like in a debrief. Like most of the time, you spent just getting pummeled by all the mistakes you make, and that's kind of how I, you know, you, you know, that's kind of how I think sometimes. You know, I don't look at the good things that are that I'm doing. It's like everything I'm doing is a failure. <laughs> it seems like, anyways, right? So. Um, and yeah, some of, you know, the breakout periods in my entire life has just literally been uh, a mental shift. And that, you know, sometimes came from my parents that sometimes came from friends, you know, sometimes myself. So that's awesome that, you know, you're, you're going to be able to teach, uh, tools and techniques for people to, uh, you know, to break that. And that's, that's, you know, your, being your own worst enemy is, is, is tough. For sure. And both of you mentioned it. And another portion of it is like finding your wingman and being intentional with those relationships to strengthen them and then show up for other people in that way as well, um, because it'll yeah. be reciprocated if you do. Um, and I think that we all have our people that we can rely on in our lives. But if you like take the time to actually actually be intentional with those relationships and what you want out of them and what you want to bring to them. It can just make them so much better. Um, and I, uh, I think you said something about like, you like are creating your future. And I feel like I'm always so scared to get into like, especially when you say the word masterclass to get into like the woo woo stuff where they're like, <laughs> just sit here and imagine making $1 million a year. <laughs> now it's your reality. Um, and that, that doesn't that, work. That is not what this is. This is where is Margot Robbie? Right. right. How many times can I imagine this? Oh, sorry. Any day now. Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, so many I times. Call it realistic optimism. Like, I want to be optimistic that I can go do the thing and that it's going to work out. But I want to be realistic in the amount of preparation and the hard work that I need in to make need to put in to make it happen. And when you kind of bring those two things together it's pretty cool. The stuff you can go do. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Doug, what do you have to add, man? Mace, I don't know if you know this, my day job is a psychology professor. Um, it sounds like you really, <laughs> like you really did your home homework here. There's a lot of, um, a lot of solid stuff there. It's all science-based cognitive behavioral therapy, cognitive restructuring. That's, that's the stuff, man. That's the stuff that works. So. I did not know that. That would have been cool for anyone to give me a heads up. <laughs> yeah, don't be don't nervous. <laughs> yesterday. No, Sorry, that's, we forget. I always think no. it's my race car I my race yeah, the, the thing the thing you nailed the hardest that, that I really want to repeat is well, I don't you didn't nail that the hardest. That was awesome. But the thing that hit so me the hardest speaking. was it sounds stupid until you try it. Right. There's, there's so much good stuff in mental health counseling and in mental, you know, in therapy and, in, and you, you get this stuff out in front of people. This, that sounds stupid. Yeah. Well, try it because it, it works. Yeah. I mean, that's great. I looked up the, the, the class. I, I might even enroll just to see what happens. Nice. <laughs> that's great. That's first it's, customer. It's, or 
forty fifth well, thousand it's so cool customer. To, to see somebody who's who's got a platform use it for something like that and what you finished up with, you know, not doing the woo. This is this is <laughs> this is real stuff. There's so much yeah. crap out there. There is. And I've had my own moments of imposter syndrome, right, as I do this course, because I would never want to take the platform that I've built and the amazing audience that has been so loyal to me as I left the Air Force and gone on to do what I do now and just cash that all in on mm -hmm. a master class to make crystals. some money, right, <laughs> on crystals. Um, if you sign up for level two, I'll send you a autographed rose quartz in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm I can buy those on eBay. But... No crystals. Ah, I love it. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I legitimately want it to one. be something that helps people. So awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, thanks, Mace. We'll put that in there. And uh, I know you got to get to dinner, so let's get through these comments and get you out of here. <laughs> yes. uh, Lena Lee says former schedule for the triple nickel maintenance super for fighting cocks and vampires why aren't navy launchers allowed to do backflip stance on shore duty like the air force because the navy thinks everything is the boat they don't distinguish right gonky everything's the boat yeah do you yeah i mean the nons get on a carrier man if you don't land it whew. yeah there's your disability not service related uh six says hi great to catch you live so nice of wombat to let you sub for him <laughs> I built models in a Viper Hornet builds coming along. So I was wondering what was the typical loadout you flew with in Iraq, Afghanistan? God, where are your troops and can I go there and count them? Um, Mesa is probably the same, right? You got the 120s on the tips, maybe a 9X, a couple GBU of flavors, 12s, 54s, 38s. Yep. And then two tanks and a targeting pod. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then the Hornet was double ugly because of the AT flare. Yeah, which, yeah. You, you live with yourself. Uh, Free Diver says, "Shout out to the 53rd. I was life support there with the F100, F106, and started of F4s. Imagine me hands off in a 106 as a guy on the ground, grounded lands. 53rd, like the weather squadron. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Hmm. They had F100s, dude. We are too late. <laughs> you know, what? I thought I saw one of those on a stick this weekend." Yeah, well, there, maybe they that. did. Yeah, Flexi says, "How cool would it be if the T-bird smoke was full of psychedelics?" <laughs> and show up a notch. Oh my gosh, I'm that would be amazing. I mean, <laughs> I feel like microdosing is becoming more mainstream. <laughs> the shrooms. Then you try to shut down the engine on your Horizon Air or jump seat back home. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. true. God, that's true. <laughs> uh, Bob says, "Reading the label from inside the jar, brilliant." Also, Mace, is that an action figure of you on the shelf there? That's a full-on mic drop. Uh, no, no, that's Thunderbird Barbie made in 1992. Oh, wait, there's or another one back there. There's another oh, one That's back uh, Phoenix from Maverick. Oh, <laughs> okay, you lost <laughs> a couple of points for that am. one. The cool <laughs> points dropped when you had to be Phoenix. <laughs> I would have accepted Maverick or Rooster for you. So they don't have a Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> yet <laughs> little opportunity rose says appreciate the continued motivation mental health minute happy to see mace on the show again bad news we'll be missing the show live for a while good news accepted into officer training school oh nice congratulations uh, congratulations awesome. rose oh, is yeah. gonna crush it be a bro rose yeah. cooperate to graduate help out help your wingman uh, Angie says, before we go, Gonky, the Florida guy, any uh, recommendations for an eight hour layover in Miami? Mover, recommendations for non touristy things to do, eat in New Orleans? Uh, yeah, avoid. Uh, it's my first time in the US <laughs> South, and local <laughs> recommendations are always the best. Yeah. If you're not strapped, you're going to get clapped. So I I would not recommend it unless you're like Belugia, like you got body armor and a Humvee. Yeah. Angie, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm way up. Uh, Eight hours from Miami. I'm up in the pan. Mover, you've been to Miami more than I have. What's what yeah. anything good down there? Very similar advice, except South Beach is okay. <laughs> Sorry, Angie. Stay indoors. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Stay indoors. Lock your doors. Uh Zipper Strover says same concept for PTSD service dogs. Touching her body and her disrupting the thoughts makes all the difference in the world. PS hi, Luna. Luna has not made an appearance yet because her contract stipulates oh. that there can be only one so think, dude you're right that's crazy i totally I, forgot I, about that uh, yeah it's not <laughs> it's 
pastime, dude. She's already decided that's not going to be it. Laura says, I struggle with negative self-talk, but these mental health minutes have helped me be more mindful. Dude, Mace, you got something good here. Mm -hmm. There's something in that. I like it. It's, I feel like the first thing is realizing that everyone has this problem. Yes. Yeah. If you don't, you're probably like a narcissist or a sociopath. <laughs> Sorry for those of you. Uh, <laughs> former commander. Yes. Uh, John says similar to tactical breathing and helps to shift your focus from any anxiety provoking thoughts to being present in the last task or moment. Hell yeah. MJ, uh, Mace, I guess the whole, the wiggle toes is like using lucky bands for cognitive behavioral therapy. Breaks the negative loop. Badass masterclass. Sounds awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Free Diver says 53rd was my squadron, but we took care of 92nd drone pilots too. Dude, where? Mm. How? Where is what the. Is... I'm so confused. We'll have to look it up. <clears throat> BJ, so to speak, says good luck to everyone who applied to the Navy's uh, Student Naval Aviator NFO board today. And that concludes our. We caught up. Yep. And That's thank good. you, Mace. Yeah, for an Thanks amazing for on, show. Man. You are always welcome on the Badass Mover and Gonky show. Rebrand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bad, uh, it won't make it past YouTube's filters. Gonky will get us canceled. No. Yeah. You can no. put the little at sign and the dollar symbols. And then... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Ops tested. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I got nothing else. Uh, Gonky, you got anything? No, again, Mace, thanks for coming on. It's awesome. No, yeah. thanks for thanks for the invite. Thanks for letting me share the course. Um, oh, obviously, yeah. you all have a big platform, a loyal audience, and every time I'm here, it's fun. <laughs> I'm we just try. waiting to be on once, and it sucks, and then I'm like, okay, that was it. <laughs> we we don't know much about anything, but we'll try to make it fun. Pretty much. Same. Yeah. I'm discovering every time you send me a list of what we're going to talk about. I'm like, the what? Mm, I need to yeah. Google that acronym. Yeah. No, no, but that's it's, fine. It's typical we'll fire pilot talk, right? We just. Yeah, they'll tell us yeah. about it in the comments. It'll be fine. Oh yeah, <laughs> they'll let <laughs> us know. You guys are so. <laughs> they'll let us know. Trust me, I don't need negative inner thoughts because I have the YouTube comment section. That's right, the comment section. <laughs> 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 they do it yeah. for me. I'm in a glass jar of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm reading the label from the wrong side. But Mace, thank you. Uh, anything else you want to say to the kids at home? No, I appreciate you all. After we had the last one, we talked about uh, social media haters and trolls. Then I quickly, over the next few days, <laughs> took our advice and read all of the comments <laughs> from our episode. And then I read the comments on the little sections you cut out. And they were all great. Oh, yeah. Hell Everyone yeah. was awesome. Generally, wow. we, got, we got a pretty good group. Douglas, what you got, man? Sir, that's all for today. Thanks, Doug. Ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee. That's all, folks. Well, hey, thanks for another great show. We'll probably see you next week unless we see got canceled this time. time. <laughs> see ya. Good night. <laughs>